Hi, big sis Stephanie. Um, who is Nico Cotto of Akadu? And why are you scared of this person? Is this a person? Are you scared of avocados? Well, tribe, what is she talking about? Hi, by the way. Hope you're dating well, you feel as well. In and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. In and out, in and out. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I do. Who's that? Oh, me too movement. Hashtag me too. Hi. Oh. So I haven't really posted on this channel in the past couple of days or my other channel and I'm alive. The FBI didn't get me. And Why you saw you about to cry? I just kind of want to talk to you guys about what's been happening the past couple of days because a lot has happened and it's been really stressful. The past couple of days have been filled with just a lot of manipulation in particular manipulating my own words against me to make me do things that I don't want to do and I don't feel comfortable doing. What? And a lot of Nikocado Avocado using his platform to threaten me avocado. and to bully me. At this point, my home safety is kind of in question. So normally I wouldn't talk about stuff like this or make a video on it. I've been pretty vocal that a lot of things can just be solved offline, but because of how how extreme things have gotten recently, I, I just want to share my side. I feel like I've been manipulated by fear that I can't say no to him. I just want to take back my power to say no, not feel like someone's holding this thing over me and threatening me. I feel like in normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't share private text messages or private DMs, but because of his constant just over and over again twisting my words. So I just feel like it's necessary and I'm only gonna be using conversations that have to do with this matter of my safety, my security, and the way that he's been threatening me. Before I get started into sharing everything that's happened, I just wanna read to you guys some definitions because I feel like I didn't know what was happening to me. And I wish I had known what the true definition of these things were. Hey, what, what are we talking about? Like, I don't know, maybe I could have prevented it, maybe I could have stood up to him, maybe I could have said no, maybe it wouldn't have gotten this far if I knew what was happening. So mental manipulation is when people seek to exploit things that are the foundation of relationships such as trust, understanding, and mutual respect in order to benefit themselves in some way. And some very easy ways that you can spot manipulation in terms of emotionally and mentally is for one, they use your words against you to make you do something mm. you don't want to do. Two is that they don't really care for how you're feeling. Three is that they make you feel guilty or ashamed. I'm going to leave some articles and videos in the description because those help me a lot. Maybe you might be experiencing something like it, so I'm just gonna leave those linked below. So going back to the story, I feel like the story happened a year ago, which it happened with Shookbug and Veronica Wang, and Shook I never bunk? thought I'd be talking about this online, but here I am. That was kind of what when story? Nick and I had our first interactions on a personal level through Instagram DMs. We spoke about what happened. From his side, it was more of him trying to clarify how I was involved or if I was involved. And also, he wanted me to make a video on my side of the story. I had told him that I wasn't involved. I don't think I need to make a video. It was just back and forth of that. Not too long after, he asked me if I wanted to collab with him. I remember specifically being transparent with him and letting him know I don't want to collab just because I feel like the drama is too fresh. I feel like me being in a video with him would just stir things up again and so for all those reasons I was transparent and I said no. From then we still didn't okay. really have much communication up until August he came to Los Angeles and he had asked if I wanted to collab and for other reasons I turned him down. Now at this point I was like you know I still feel like I want to meet him in person you know if he's in LA I also felt like I turned down to a I was like let's meet. <laughs> So I had set up this dinner with me, Zach, and Nick at Hot Pot. Honestly, immediately going in, I was nervous. I definitely had a guard up because I was like, oh, anytime we've talked before, he's just been asking nonstop about Veronica. And so I, I, I even went in with this gift of like a bottle of champagne and these macaroons because I just, I wanted him to know that like, hey, I, I didn't I know what macaroons are because I don't like you, you know? And so immediately when I met him, I could probably say that I was kind of taken aback by how comfortable he was. Hmm. He just kept saying like, yeah, that's online. You can trust me. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. 
I do. Good. Like, I'm not gonna say whatever you say online, that's online. And so I just felt like, oh, like, that makes sense. He even opened up to me first, which made me- Okay, 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 okay. I, I don't, I don't wanna, like, I don't know the full story, so I can't really say much. I literally don't even know what's going on. I'm probably late as hell or whatever. This nigga, Avakadu, got a real durable-like face, bro. It's like, real. <laughs> Nah, I hold you, bro. His face is like real. <laughs> Peter Pettigrew, yeah! He gives me Peter Pettigrew vibes. Y'all know who Peter Pettigrew is? It's, it's a Harry Potter character. Basically, he could turn into a rat, and his facial features low key resemble a rat, like with the eyes and the, the nose. What's like a famous gerbil? Ratatouille? <laughs> Ratatouille's name is not Ratatouille. Okay. Like, I'm not gonna say whatever you say online, that's online. And so I just felt like, oh, like, that makes sense. He even opened up to me first, which made me feel really good. I felt like, oh, wow, he trusts me. And so I started opening up and obviously... That's that classic manipulation. Mm -mm. Nah, that they got you there. Oh, damn, that's classic manipulation. I'm not gonna hold you. And so I started opening up and obviously the conversation did lead to Shookbug and Veronica. And I feel like in any other situation i would never want to put this online but because i feel like this is something that he's kind of holding over my head right now kind of twisting my words i just want to share with you some things that i shared with him and it has nothing to do with shook bang and it is also another reason why i never made a video about this in the first place veronica and i have a very interesting relationship she mentioned me in a video when i was so small and she gave me a shout out so <laughs> That's kind of where our relationship started and I just remember feeling like, oh my gosh, she gave me a shout out and I just replayed that part where she said my name over and over again. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel that. And she was always so encouraging. She always told me, you know, you're doing amazing. Like, don't give up. Like, you're doing great. Sweetie. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, and even though all that happened, when we first met in LA, when we filmed all of our collabs, that was the first time we met in person. And I could say that we have very different personalities. We have, let me tell you, so the things I told him because I feel like I don't want them to get twisted, but she was dying her hair pink at the time. Oh, <laughs> and that pink hair almost killed me. That pink hair almost killed me. I was driving around town like we were picking up hair dye. She canceled on a video because she wanted to dye her hair again. It was a lot. That sounds <laughs> like a lot. these are things that I, like even now I'm like thinking, I was like, wow, that was annoying. And I'm sure she has <laughs> things that she finds so annoying about me. But none of them had to do with Shukbang. None of them would clarify anything about Shukbang. It was just me and Veronica have weird personalities that maybe didn't match perfectly. I shared these little frustrations with him. It's nothing I would share online because I know how the internet works. I'm not going to go and share every little frustration or annoyance that I have with every Smart. person. There Smart. was that conversation and then a lot of it really was him opening up to me about his home life and Orlin and Orlin's tomatoes. We stayed at Hot Pot till 2 in the morning. We got kicked out like Oregon? rebels. <laughs> Rebels. And at this point, we had been there for hours, and he had made me feel so comfortable, so, so comfortable, and like I could trust him, like he understood me. Oh, what did you I tell I ended him? up opening up about oh. something that I don't even talk about on YouTube anymore. If you guys have been with me since the beginning, some of you may know, but... I was sexually assaulted in my own home. It was somebody that I had to let into my home and then they took away my power to say no and it's kind of just shattered any sort of security, any sort of security that I felt at home prior. And then after that, I left with a very warm feeling of just, hey, <laughs> He's nice. We started continuing our friendship through text and there's not much in there. It's just like regular personal life stuff. But some of the stuff that kind of have to do with what's happened is in October, he asked me, are you happy with your home? I low key want that security system. And I told him that I was very happy. And then he texted me back that night saying, yeah, what's the name of your fancy security system? I'd like to research it, ha ha ha. And at this point I disclosed which security system I had, but I also kind of told him like why I liked it. At this point I felt like he well, was I, a friend why? and I wanted to 
He seemed like the type of nigga to be passive aggressive with it. I'm not gonna hold you. And I hate, I really hate that. <laughs> I don't like the passive aggressive shit. Not only that, but damn, I didn't know that happened to Stephanie, bro. I'm not gonna hold y'all. I'm probably never ever gonna meet Stephanie. I feel like she's like on a completely different level. Like she's so successful. There's no way that I would ever be in contact with her, bro. But I have, I have adopted her as the big sis, bro. I have an actual big sis. It says if you're watching this, you are still my big sis. But like, this is the tribe's big sis. I'm not gonna hold you. My sis be getting jealous and whatnot. <laughs> she could be lying for all we know, but I, I'm falling for it. Yeah, what's the name of your fancy security system? I'd like to research it. Ha ha ha. And at this point, I disclosed which security system I had, but I also kind of told him like why I liked it. At this point, I felt like he was a friend and I wanted to give him whatever help he needed in terms of security. And then November 1st, he texted me asking if I was doing like this TV interview that was a, supposed to be about mukbang and they had to reach out to me and so I told him hey I was approached but I turned it down are you doing it and he said I turned it down today too too invasive she really showing receipts too safety like, I mean, text messages. and the neighbors would have a field day with the camera crew trucks outside and then he said but yeah I didn't know what level paranoid I was at so I feel better knowing I'm not alone lol like this moment I really feel like cemented our friendship because I felt like there was this one common ground that we shared there was this one thing that I feel like everyone's a little paranoid, but I feel like to the level where you are very paranoid about feeling safe and where most people feel the most safe. And he was telling me like, hey, you're not crazy. I thought I was crazy. We both feel the same way about it. And so it just really made me feel like we have this thing that we just can always talk to each other about. He texted me in November that he was going to be in December for a bunch of days to do a lot of collabs with other YouTubers. And he asked if I was interested in collabing. And this had been a really long time since Shukbang. And so I said, you know what? Like, we've developed a friendship. I've met you. I feel safe with you. You make me feel like I can trust yeah, you. Yeah, it makes of sense course. to collab. Like, let's collab. It'll be fun. And the first collab was on Saturday, this past Saturday, and it was at my house. And so I gave him the address, and I felt comfortable knowing that I could trust him to enter this place where I very rarely let people in now. And so Saturday, he came over, and I want to say that... Saturday, I didn't have any feelings of like alarm or anything like that. I think but there was like moments where I feel the oh, that was a little weird, <laughs> but nothing crazy. It was nothing that made me feel unsafe, but there was some small things like later I'll get into, but Saturday went really well from what I knew Saturday. <laughs> Okay. And then Sunday happened. I was originally supposed to meet Zach for breakfast, and then I was supposed to film with Nick for his channel. Who the hell is Zach? We just kind of reworked the schedule. A lot of changes were made, and we all decided that we were going to film three videos, three collab videos. In one day? All three of us. So after breakfast, Damn. it would be me, Zach, I'm and saying Nick, that. Like, I don't or do that Zach's much. channel. So it'd be an ASMR video. And then the second video would be me, Nick, and Zach for Nick's channel, but it would be a mukbang, so Zach would just sit quietly and then me and Nick would talk. And then the third video would be in, on Nick's channel with all three of us, but this one would be more of an ASMR style video in Zach's house. It was a lot of filming and a lot of eating that day. And the first video went really well, and that was posted to Zach's channel, and that was the first video up. And then the second video came around. We were just kind of like spending some time together before we got hungry again. I just remember that before we filmed Nick's video, his first video, the talking Bung. We were supposed to go to H Mart and then go back to his place so that we could film it. And we okay. were in the car, and the topic of what we were going to talk about in the talking mukbang came up. And this is <laughs> kind of when I first felt really uncomfortable because Nick said it very assertively we're going to talk about Veronica and we're going to spill all the tea. And I was kind of confused because I was like, oh, whoa. What? <laughs> and so I was immediately like, Veronica, no, no. Right? <laughs> and then he, he went, but why'd you tell me yesterday that you wanted to then? And so I, I thought back to what happened yesterday, and prior to filming my mukbang for my channel, he had mentioned, you know, I think that we need to talk about shikbang because you know everyone's going to be talking about it in the comments. And I don't know why I believed it. I said, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's weirder if we just act like it never happened. And so I felt like I was comfortable mentioning shikbang, addressing it to the capacity of me and Nick. Yes, this is how we met, through a shikbang video, but we have no ill will towards each other. 
it's all over. We're friends now. Trying to light you know? the gas on I you? felt like I would never tell him that I wanted to talk about Veronica and specifically spill the tea. It, it had always been about Shukbang. Me and Veronica's relationship didn't involve Nick. And so I was just confused. And it got really awkward after I said, oh no, like I don't mind addressing Shukbang, but that's it. And he just got silent. And I couldn't have to feel like he was really upset by that yeah, and yeah. so I just remember like I was driving and I was like this is so uncomfortable do I raise the music like do I step on the pedal what do I do <laughs> but I still the... felt like step okay on the at pedal, least we like... cleared it up before the video like at least now he gets it he's yeah, a little yeah. upset at least the video won't be weird then we got to his place we made the noodles and there was a lot that happened because of that video which we'll get into such as footage I didn't know where I was being recorded and other things but what? we started filming the noodle mukbang we sat down he was in the middle of us and we started eating these nuclear noodles and the first 30 minutes honestly they went taste. amazing and i remember thinking to myself damn that car ride was important because like we were honestly having a really really good time for like the first half and then nick brought up the conversation of shukbang but he brought it up in a way and i know that the my headphones just died no I know that the full footage is not out there. He did it in a way, I don't remember his exact wording, but it was in a- What did you want to share? Or do you change your mind now? Um, <laughs> I just, I just feel like- maybe... You said you wanted to talk yeah, to your viewers so... with me here, but cause you never talked to any of your viewers. And, it... and I just remember feeling just shocked because the way he went about it was just so- Oh, whoa. That felt really awkward, bro. What I said. <laughs> that was probably the forcest fake laugh I've heard in a minute. Um, <laughs> I just, I just feel like maybe, you said you wanted to talk yeah, to your so viewers with me here, but because you never talked to any of your viewers. And, and I just remember feeling just shocked because the way he went about it was just so almost like an interrogation, but I was like, you know what? It's fine, it's fine. I'm gonna, you know, joke it off. I'm gonna say my piece. I said, you know, I don't have any hard feelings because you made those videos and I get why you made those videos. I had these baby wipes in front of me and I kept wiping him every time he got too serious to just kind of play it off like, let me wipe him up. And every single time I tried to do that, increasingly, it seemed like he got more offended. He would look at me with such a shocked face. <gasps> like, I can't believe but you said you wanted to talk about it, and now you don't? Mm -hmm. Almost like, how dare you? You said you wanted to talk about it, and I just remember I kept trying to put it off. I kept trying to show him I'm uncomfortable. I kept trying to lighten the mood with jokes and give all of us an out of this conversation without yeah. ending it awkwardly. But it was just rapid fire, and it increasingly went from shukbang, maybe the first two sentences, into Veronica. And then, instead of asking me, any more questions, he started twisting my words. And he started saying things like, if only you guys knew what she told me. I would never tell you guys what happened because she shared it with me in private. She trusts me with these things. But if you only knew. When I heard, when you sat down with me. And I remember this one part where I freaked out because he said, she is such a strong woman to me as if I had endured something so horrendous by Veronica. And I, I almost was like, shoot, do I say like, oh, whoa, it's not that serious. Like all I did was go pick up hair dye with her, you know? But then that would defeat, like, I don't want to disclose all of this. I'm not comfortable with sharing this. This has nothing no. to do with anything. Yeah, exactly. And I remember picking up a baby wipe and being like, I know, like, my life is so hard being a mukbanger and like really trying to show him that, hey, I'm trying to get out of this conversation. Hey, I'm trying to get out of this conversation. And I did this pretty much almost every two sentences he gave. And increasingly, he looked at me with more and more shock on his face, as if he was shocked and angry at the What's fact this that I refused to talk about what I told him in private. But you told me yesterday you wanted to talk about it. Then why did you say you wanted to talk about it? I guess she changed her mind. He, there was this one part where I had told him about how Veronica, she has really good audio. Um, <laughs> she likes to watch her audio. We're not paying it. Oh, never mind. About how Veronica, she has really good audio. Um, <laughs> she likes to watch her audio, right? Me too. So if it peaks. That's what I do when I look over to the left. 
if it's pink, too. she'll know. So she's very <laughs> cautious. And I just remember telling him, like, I was a little bit more cautious during her collabs on her channel because I was watching the audio peaks because I have a very high-pitched, loud voice. And he, he insinuated that, oh, remember nice. what you told me? This thing that she made you do where she'd put this, ugh, disgusting. As if it was something so horrendous that Veronica did to me. And at that moment, I freaked out. And again, I wanted to defend myself by sharing my story, uh -huh. which is, I think, what he wanted. But I just remember saying, oh my god, you make it sound like I was abused. It felt like he was putting words into my mouth. Yes, the situation is kind of there. Yes, there was a computer when I was filming. But no, it wasn't horrendous. No, it's not something that you should be disgusted by. Maybe annoyed, not disgusted. One of the yeah. reasons that I didn't want to make this video and I felt like I was crazy is because I know everyone's just going to be saying, Stephanie, you are a grown woman. <laughs> Why didn't you just leave? Or tell him, hey, stop. At that point, like, I don't even know in. if I can describe to you the feelings. Nah, because I, I know exactly how you, yep. It's You're too almost deep in. like any feeling that you had of this person at least has a mutual respect for me. It's not even friendship. It's not even trust. Those were long gone. But it's this person has somewhat of a mutual respect for me, my, my comfort, my consent to talk about things. It's just all gone. And so you just feel like you're not talking to the same person anymore. Mm -hmm. And he didn't care what I wanted to talk about. He didn't care how I felt. It, it went on for 30 minutes. Damn. And it just felt so personal. I was in this space at this point where I felt like anything will be used against me. And I felt like anything I say, even Nick stop, he would use it and make an exposing video or threaten me with it. I don't know. I was just scared. Whoever I knew Jack wasn't here anymore. I just felt like it wasn't the same Nick I knew. He knew that I was uncomfortable. He knew I didn't want to talk about this, but he kept going. And so at what point does my own comfort or does my feeling even matter to him? And so the video ends and I just feel really, really weird. I don't know how to describe the feeling. It's not just scared, but it's also like almost like ashamed. Like, wow, I made him mad because I changed my mind. Did I change no. my mind? But I never had the mind to talk about Veronica. All I know is I was incredibly shaken up. And I just remember, like, I didn't want to be in close proximity with him. And I was just kind of, like, standing off to the side. And I, I didn't want to say anything, but, oh, I'm so nervous. Like, I don't know what to do. Oh, man, like, I wish I, wish I didn't say that. I'm so nervous. Because I felt like if I said I'm uncomfortable or I'm scared or why did you do that, he would just get more and more increasingly angry with me. Yeah. I had this feeling of... I just need to do whatever I can to get through tonight and tomorrow because we have collapse scheduled tomorrow and just be done with it because I don't want him to get angry. I don't want him to make a video using these words and trying to say all these things I said about Veronica. I just wanted to get through tonight. And that sounds crazy even to me. Like me saying that right now, I sound crazy. Stephanie, nah, but it's... you are 24. You should have got up and left. I'm 24. I'm... But I just couldn't. Big sis, so are we the same age? Point. And so the third video, I was like, okay, at least it's an ASMR video. It'll be fine. I remember even texting my dad at that time. I didn't even want to text my fiance. I was texting him really basic stuff, making it seem like I was fine. I was like, what you doing? Yeah, everything's great. <laughs> On to the next video. And I knew that anything I say about being uncomfortable or I don't want this, it didn't matter because then he'd say, but you said. And I called my dad. And I, I was talking to him in Korean. And my dad was really concerned because we weren't really talking about anything serious, but I just wanted to sound as if I had gotten the worst news. And so I hung up with him and, mm. you know, they both saw the conversation that I had. And you Nick have an was excuse like, for Are you your okay? Demeanor. And I said, yeah, just a lot of really bad family stuff going on. I did this because I, I was so scared of him that I didn't even want to act differently around him. No, I respect but it. But at that moment, That's I was smart. so shaken. I knew I couldn't be you couldn't play it off. goofy right now. I couldn't be excited. And so I just needed a minute. Just try to shove down the need to cry and the shove down all these hurt and scared and uncomfortable feelings that I had yeah. because we still had a video to film. 
And so then we go to Zach's place and we're cooking. I kept trying to find a way out. I mentioned multiple times in a very choking way, like, you guys don't need me. I don't even, it's ASMR. You guys don't need me. And he would say things like, Nick would say things like, Stephanie, we're all tired. So I felt like that was a signal to me, like, get it together. And I was like, oh, he knows something's wrong. And so then because of that, I started getting more and more cautious. And I was like trying to make jokes. And I was trying to be, you know, there was like this hot Cheeto thing we were cooking. And I was like, it looks like a heart. Oh. And I just felt like if oh. I didn't make him feel oh. like everything was okay, he would just get more and more angry with me. Mm. You could tell that she was analyzing her actions and being very self-critical of things that she did when in reality bro when you in that situation anything that happens yeah maybe you could have done things smarter yeah you could have been more assertive yeah you could have moved differently but at the end of the day bro you shouldn't be in that situation anyways you know what I'm saying? like you shouldn't be the one getting hurt you should it just shouldn't be happening to you yeah maybe if you hadn't done this then this wouldn't have happened but this shouldn't have happened anyways you know what I'm saying? Very few people are prepared to be in a situation where they could be hurt. You know what I'm saying? You got to train for that, for real, for real. And then you got to train to overcome the response of fight or flight. Most of the times it's flight, but sometimes it's adapt. Try to figure out maneuver better. And who can fault you for doing that? I don't blame her at all, bro. She can't be too hard on herself. Oh. And I just felt like if I didn't make him feel like everything was okay, he would just get more and more angry with me. Mm. And so we filmed the third video at the end of the ASMR because it was a whispering one. Nick turned to me and he said, is there anything else you'd like to say? Again? And I just remember feeling so gutted. Like my heart had dropped to the ground because I thought it was going to be another interrogation. Right. What would you like to say? Say. Thank you for watching us eat these. And so I, I said, that was a good one. Thanks for watching us eat this food. This is, it was, I mean, it was good. Point, it was a great you way know, to Nick end it. Nick is talking about, what are we going to eat tomorrow? And I'm just, at this point, I'm really just trying to go home without oh, yeah. angering him. So I leave that area around 2 in the morning. Damn. And I cool. drive home. And when I'm driving home, I'm experiencing a lot of emotions. Even after what happened in the video, he knew. There's no way he didn't know I was uncomfortable. Sure, maybe there was miscommunication before the video. Maybe he really thought that I wanted to spill my guts about Veronica all of a sudden. But in the video, there's no way Nick did not know that I was so uncomfortable for those 30 minutes. Because I was trying not to cry for those 30 minutes. Mm. And so I'd be like, okay, like make sure you don't cry, but also make sure you have answers ready. What do I say? Even after you the video, stressing yourself out. it seemed like he was still the one that was upset with me. I had no right to be upset. He was like, well, you're the one that said you wanted to talk about it. Then why would you tell me you wanted to talk about it? There was no, hey, are you okay? I know it got a little heated. There was none of that. But I also feel really weird. Like I almost feel like I did tell him. Did I? I don't think that I would, but what if I did? Or what He's if I'm trying not to manipulate your memory? Or what if I said, yeah, let's do it. But maybe I should have said, but without talking about Veronica and everything I told you in private, I started questioning myself. I started being like, why did you do that, Stephanie? Why would you ever make him feel like that? Mm -hmm. Kind of like an internal battle of half of me being like, why did you do that, Stephanie? That was your fault for misleading him. And then the other part of me was like, it doesn't matter. You were still uncomfortable in the video and he did not care. And That's he was actually fact. upset. I get home and That's I That's literally just, a fact. <laughs> I broke down. I mean, I just went straight into the bathtub. I just didn't want to even smell like the food we had just eaten. I did not want to talk to anyone. And my fiance, is, Mango? he obviously knows something's wrong. And so mm. he's sitting there and he's saying, babe, what happened? I was like, I don't know if something happened. I felt like I couldn't talk about it because what was there to talk about? It's not like he held me against my will to film these videos. I just can't explain this fear. And I just was so scared that I sounded crazy because you're a grown woman, you had a car, you could have left, you could say no. But I, I truly felt in that moment after everything that's happened that I couldn't. Mm. But how do you explain that to someone? Because they would just look at you and say, Yes, you could. <laughs> to be honest, what it felt like 
And the only- Bro, 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 when you- Because my sisters have been in similar situations and- Having had extensive conversations with them, that feeling of paralyzing fear, it's not just for show, like it's not just words. That fear is truly paralyzing. And when you're trying to survive, the actions you undertake may seem crazy to outsiders looking in, but in that moment, it made sense. And if you're the one telling the story, then it worked. So whatever anybody feels like you should have done, yeah, you should have left. That's definitely, we're not, nobody's denying that. But I don't feel like anybody should begrudge you because you did it in that situation. Maybe you feel like there would have been a resolution to the situation. You would have left with much more better intentions. But unfortunately, that entire situation was fucked from the jump. That's what it seemed like for me. So there would have been no resolution for you to have reached. Uh -huh. It seemed like this Nikocado of Akadu nigga kind of weird, big sis Stephanie. I'm going to see his side of the story because I'm assuming... I mean, I don't know, but I'm going to figure out if he's made his side of the story and see what he says, because I can't take your side without considering perspectives, but I am taking your side without considering his. <laughs> but I, I truly felt in that moment after everything that's happened that I couldn't. But how do you explain that to someone? Because they would just look at you and say, yes, you could. <laughs> to be honest, what it felt like and the only way that I've ever felt like this to any degree in my life prior to Nick was a couple years ago. And I vowed I would never find myself in a position like that ever again, where I felt like no really didn't have a lot of power. And I felt like it didn't matter if I was uncomfortable. That night I was really pushed into a really, really, really dark place Damn. that I never thought I would be in again. I had a breakdown and it was unlike any other breakdown I had. It was one where I felt shame, guilt, because I did say, I, I did say. Oh yeah, it's over. I ain't gonna lie, Nikocado of Akadu, it's over for your head top, you gerbil looking fuck. What is this nigga up to right now, bro? Now I'm on his ass. He made big sis Stephanie cry, bro. I don't care about this nigga's story no more, bro. She's like really sad right now. I don't wheel chair. Shh. Orlin, stop. You're discriminating fat phobia. Listen here. Excuse me, Matt Stoney. I'm speaking to you. You and your fans keep a t coming to my page. Are they fat phobic? I lost 89 LBs. Where? I don't see it. You know why you eat in private, you wear in public. You know, not everything's fat phobia in this world. Back it up, back it up, back it up. All right, bro, what? Whoa. Uh, I think. I don't even need to roast him, bro. I think he's doing that all by himself. <laughs> Whoa. That's what my monsters look like in my nightmares, bro. And then I proceed to light him up. <laughs> because I did say. Oh, I, you I are did crying. Say, I'm so sorry, I big sis. Didn't I? I don't know. He said I did. So I must have. And then this shame of. Why did you even stay for the third video? Why did you even laugh with him? Why didn't you tell him, no, Nick, I don't want this. No, why didn't you tell him no? After everything creator. that's happened in the past, I told myself I nah, would never- bro, I ain't gonna hold you. You a content creator, you made obligations. It makes sense, I understand it. It seemed like everything hit you when you left. Why did you even stay for the third video? Why did you even laugh with him? Why didn't you tell him, no, Nick? I don't want this. No. Why didn't you tell him no? After everything that's happened in the past, I told myself I would never, ever, ever feel like that again. I would never feel like that again. Oh. I just didn't want to feel like that ever again. I ain't gonna lie, Nikocado of Akudu. It's over for your head top. Is that husband Mango? Yo, from the top angle, he look mad hands all. Oh, W husband Mango in the chat, bruh. 
Look at this nigga tucking her in. Oh my God. It had been a really long night and I- To all the niggas in the tribe, bro, all the dudes in the tribe, that's that's a good, you know what I'm saying? Forget what everybody online saying, bro. And that's just a brief look. I'm sure they have arguments. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure the relationship is just as flawed as anybody else. That level of support should be normal and typical in the relationship you have with anybody that you love. Anybody online saying otherwise, evaluate their statements heavily. That's it had been love, a really bro. long night and I went to sleep at around 7 a.m. I was in and out of sleep until around 2 p.m. At this point, I had already missed text messages from both of them separately and I ended up calling Ooh, Zach both, at 2.20. Oh. And when I called him, Zach, I didn't mention okay, anything just, that happened exactly yesterday. So I said, you know, you, I was up all night editing. I know I should have gone to sleep early, but he's the I woke other up, banker. not feeling too great. I think I have to cancel Thank today because it, it was going to be another three-person collab day. For some reason, the thought of texting Nick at this moment, because I had missed calls and missed text messages from him, gave me this like, like I started getting very short of breath. And so I washed my face and around 3.20, I texted them and I'm just gonna go through just the whole thread of text messages. You gonna so show I texted them at 3.29 p.m. and I said, hey guys, sorry I've been in and out of sleep all afternoon after staying up late after getting back. Damn. I don't think I'll be able to film any collabs today. I'm feeling really sick and I realized I had a few sponsors due before a year end that are really time sensitive. I'm so sorry. I hope you guys understand, but I'm really happy that we knocked some out yesterday. And I put my phone down, I put it on silent, and these are the next messages I got. You just not realized? Stephanie, I have been sitting here for five hours. When you were going in and out of sleep, you should have picked up the phone and given me a call, not leave me hanging. You didn't like it when Veronica did that to you. So no, I'm sorry. I do not understand. Who is this nigga? Who does this nigga think he is? I texted him back. I'm so sorry for making you feel that way. I sincerely apologize. I was oh. so drained and slightly out of it this morning, and I'm so Sis. upset I didn't call you back earlier because I would never want you to, because I would never want you to feel like I don't respect your time. Again, I'm truly sorry. And out of respect for our developing friendship, I do want to be transparent and let you know I was uncomfortable with yesterday's video. I'm so sorry if I let you think or miscommunicated in any way that I wanted to talk about Veronica, but I truly did not. I mentioned that I wouldn't mind addressing you and me as it pertains to Shookbug, that neither of us had any hard feelings towards each other after what happened. Okay, big sis, I ain't gonna hold you. You talking about some maybe you didn't communicate your intentions correctly. Judging from this, you are very good at communicating your intentions. I mean, to be honest, you do it for a living, don't you? It's on him, bro. He manipulated the situation. You communicated everything that you needed to communicate. He just wanted to get his view. That's literally what it is. He wanted to get his title, his click, his comments, and he was willing to sacrifice your well-being for it. Ain't no way he was sitting in that chair talking about some back it up, back it up. 300 rolls on his body, bro. Looking like a deformed Michelin man. Vegeta haircut looking ass nigga. My nigga Widow's Peak is really, really peaking. There we go. Rhino from Bolt. <laughs> He look, he don't look like that, but that's funny. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> All right, continue, continue, continue. My fault. I paused because you was apologizing way too much, Stephanie. You didn't need to apologize that much. I feel so sorry that you feel like you had to say sorry this many times. I was so drained and slightly out of it this morning, and I'm so upset I didn't call you back earlier because I would never want you to... F because I would never want you to feel like I don't respect your time. Again, I'm truly sorry. And out of respect for our developing friendship, I do want to be transparent and let you know I was uncomfortable with yesterday's video. I'm so sorry if I let you think or miscommunicated in any way that I wanted to talk about Veronica, but I truly did not. I mentioned that I wouldn't mind addressing you and me as it pertains to Shookbug, right. that neither of us had any hard feelings towards each other after what happened. And I did give you my perspective on what happened when we hung out, and I felt as if it was misrepresented in the video. I've mentioned to you many times that although Veronica and I aren't friends, and I am hurt or annoyed by some things that happened between us, I have absolutely no ill will towards her, and I feel some compassion for her situation since I've gotten to know her prior. Again, I understand this is your video, and I respect your feelings about the situation, but this is how I feel. Again, I'm sincerely so sorry for not getting back to you in time this morning, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay, and I am so sorry for this morning. He texted me back. Then why did you tell me at your house that you wanted to address it on my channel? Also, why are you texting this to Zach? I messaged you privately. And Nigga. I responded, 
I want to address the issue here since all three of us were in the video, and I also owe Zach an apology for this morning and not keeping him updated on the schedule. I'm so sorry for any inconveniences I've caused. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry if I made you feel that way. I, like I wanted way to let you know you, because sis. I didn't know that there was a gap of miscommunication and understanding between us till the middle of that video we were filming. I was okay with talking about Shukbang as it pertains to just you and me. Again, I apologize for any misunderstanding there could have been. I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay, and I'm so sorry again for this morning as well. He responded with, You already talked to Zach this morning, but ignored me for five hours after that. Don't play games. Oh, hell he texted me yeah. back and I said, Again, I'm so sorry if there was any miscommunication and if I made you feel that way. I wanted to take this time to clarify miscommunication about the video because I didn't know there was a gap in understanding till the middle of filming the video. And to apologize for this morning, I truly am so sorry. I know that I impacted your schedule today and I'm so sorry about that. He said, Awesome. So which day would you like to reschedule for? And I Bro, responded, Send this nigga straight to the block city. You know what I'm mean? Block this nigga, bro, because he's moving mad disrespectfully. You over here apologizing like crazy when you don't even need to do that. If anything, what? Like, I don't even know what you would be apologizing for. Yeah, you don't feel good. I bet you this nigga got a hundred avocados in his stomach right now. <laughs> I'm not feeling this nigga vibe at all, bro. If you was an avocado, nigga, avocado, avocado, you'd be an avocado my mom would throw away. J'étais <laughs> leave. Let me chill, let me chill. Okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He just got me a little irritated. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't know his side of the story and we have to consider that. So I may take all of my words back if I hear what he has to say. So before you get mad at me, Nikocado Avocado Vans, <laughs> let's just wait until we get to his video and I may be like, damn, Stephanie, you capping. <laughs> clarify miscommunication about the video because I, I didn't know there was a gap in understanding till the middle of filming the video and to apologize for this morning I truly am so sorry I know that I impacted your schedule today and yeah, I'm bro. so sorry I really about don't like that. Her, like, said, like this awesome so which day would you like to reschedule Dick for yeah, bro. and yeah. I responded I know that you're in LA for only a couple more days and have a lot scheduled and I'm so sorry for today. <sighs> sorry. I do have to get back to you since I do have approaching deadlines and I know my fiance already had things planned for me and the dog goes for the holidays. Again, I'm so sorry for today and I hope you're able to enjoy the rest of your day. And he responded with, literally at any point in this conversation you could have resumed with our videos planned for tonight. Please talk to me. Zach told me he wants to be left out. I reached out half a dozen times already. Please talk to me there. Yeah, nobody the wants to talk to you. He said, Please give me a call. I got your group message, but it would be nice to talk to you here. Can you give me a call, please? I haven't heard from you personally since yesterday, and I feel we need to chat. You only message things to the group chat, but not to me here. This is going to be my last time reaching out for the evening. I'm feeling hurt. Please talk to me, not through Zach. I, care I also about your had feelings. eight missed calls, some of them FaceTimes from Nick at the time. And later on, after all of this, there were some Instagram posts and stories that were made that I, I didn't know, but they were made while this conversation was happening. And the first is his Instagram post that's still up right now as of filming this, and I'm going to put it right here. And it says, I'm this effing close to making an exposing video. Should I? What the eff? Yeah, your hairline is cooked, buddy. Like... That widow's peak is something serious. I'm this effing close to making an exposing video. Should I? What the F is wrong with people? So rude, so self-serving, and inconsiderate. And then he posted a story with a black Nigga, screen. Nigga, describe making yourself. Some That's tea, crazy. Guys. You won't believe the audacity people have, but I have lots of receipts. I fucking and hate that. Clips. You won't believe the Every audacity. Every time he texted me or called me, I feel like... And the audio clips that he posted on his story, in audio clips, I got alarmed because I felt weird about that. I never consented 
to any audio clips. So that means these were illegally recorded. When and where and how? I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know if this was just an empty threat to scare me even more or if something happened that I don't know about. The only thing mm. I can do is check what I have of security footage. And I went through all of Saturday when he was at my house. He was here for about five-ish hours. And out of those five hours that he was here, I used the restroom once. And during that time that I slipped away to the restroom very, very what quickly, happened? the one happened? time that I did, without letting me know what he was doing, he took multiple pictures inside my house. Oh, no. Nah. And then oh, nah. immediately he started looking around at the ceiling. I didn't have any cool light fixtures so up there. I just don't know what else would be up there other than security cameras. Seeing that footage was shattering and so angering because after everything that he made me feel safe enough to tell him about, I told him about... The one thing that I don't talk to anyone about anymore. And I don't know if I would be this alarmed if throughout our entire interactions, I feel like he had never had any good or even harmless intentions with everything that he did. The way that he did it during the five hours he was here, the minute that I slipped away to the restroom, you knew mm -hmm. why I'm so paranoid. You know why I have such a hard time letting people into my home. It was a very violating feeling and it was just something that I don't think I'll ever be able to understand. But again, I felt like, again, that was my fault. I felt like, what? yes, this is gross. Yes, this is creepy. But really, it's your problem, Stephanie, because you have this, this trauma that maybe not a lot of people have. And maybe even though Nick knows about your trauma and knows how crazy you are about home security, maybe he doesn't really understand. And then I came across this. And this is where I'm going to get really angry <laughs> for this yeah. part of the video. Hop because on that there energy. is no part of this video that I can stand by and say that I support Nick as a person, as someone who has a platform. This was a video that he took and consented to posting onto YouTube. It looked like he deleted it. I don't Also, there's no situation in which I would be okay with someone taking pictures in my crib while I'm not around. Like, I don't know what you'd have to go through to understand that feeling of uneasiness when you think of that. But for me personally, I completely agree with Stephanie. I didn't like that. That's shady as hell in my opinion. I hate to be the where I'm from, nigga, but where I'm from, nigga, you, you can get beat for that. I'm just saying. You will never get an invite from me ever again. Dunzo. Like, <laughs> never hear from me ever again, bro. That's bozo behavior. That's so weird. This was a video that he what did took he do? and consented to posting onto YouTube. It looked like he deleted it. I don't know if he ever addressed it. There is this channel called Shadebug who uploaded it, but with tons of edits. Shade those bug. voice edits and those face edits are not my doing, but I'm just going to insert some clips here because... I think when someone shows me a pattern of predatory behavior, I'm not going to not listen. I'm not going to ignore it. Good. Come on over, we'll hang out, we'll do our stuff, we can mukbang, and then do stuff after. You know, we were... It was not about just film with me. It was about, like, we're going to get it on. I literally blew dry my hair all over again. I put on so much perfume, I wasted it. I wasted $90 perfume. But I made sure I washed my extra good and they eat all your food and they leave and you're like i wasted my time and i scrubbed my <laughs> for this experience because i was nice enough to say i'll eat whatever the you want to eat because i'm gonna get sucked you know like okay i'm gonna bend over because i you know like i'm gonna give you what you want or i'm gonna get what i want and nothing happened waiting to get my action well no wonder dude Okay, You're a loser. okay, look, bro, I don't care if he's gay or not. Like, we both know I don't care. But the way he's describing it is like very, very telling of the way he considers interaction between people, bro. How much you want to bet that other person probably wasn't even on the same type of time? And I'm not gonna sit here on a high horse and pretend like niggas don't think that way. Of course, of course, bro. But to say it publicly on a channel where thousands hundreds of thousands maybe millions of people that's not a good look bro i understand you trying to keep it real and whatnot you have to understand the demographic of people that watch your channel though i never try to perpetrate an image of me being perfect or even me being a good human being but i do know that people of all ages watch my channel and that if i want to have a positive internet footprint then i need to be careful with what i say now mind you, 
my internet footprint will be positive but it'll definitely be destructive chaotic it'll be whatever i want to be if i'm keeping it honest with you but just know that it won't be negative or talking about shit like this this is like weirdo shit especially and even if i do talk about like going on a date that failed where i wanted to smash i would never be so vulgar with the way i describe it i'd make it amusing i'd make it funny this is just like kind of awkward and uncomfortable like okay bro i didn't need to i didn't need to know this whatever you want to eat because i'm gonna get sucked you know like okay i'm gonna bend over because i you know like i'm gonna give you what you want or i'm gonna get what i want and nothing happened waiting to get my action well no wonder dude you're a loser i am in new york for so why are you talking to him then my time is important i would have rather spent it alone this was supposed to enhance my trip not make it more frustrating but you have to understand where i'm coming from too but you have to understand where i'm coming from too i'm clearly signaling to you i am ready that you are here for to be ready i'm not going to just grab it because you will come back and it's gonna be the little me too movement the little me too movement oh he's not here to be ready for you Nobody is here to be ready for you. The little And it's not me. the little Me Too movement. How right. dare you That's discredit crazy. an entire movement that the sole purpose was giving people a voice oh. who didn't have a voice. How dare you discredit the entire thing that saved so many people because you had a bad date in New York City. Damn. The little Me Too movement. Oh, no one's going to believe you. No one's going to believe you because it was inappropriate. And that's why you didn't grab it. You didn't grab it because of the Me Too movement. You didn't grab it because there was a hashtag on Twitter. You didn't grab it because that's sexual assault if he didn't want you to. So sorry. Um, no. In 2017, I- Sis, you gotta stop. Okay, I understand. Cause I be apologizing too. I ain't gonna hold you. I do be apologizing. And I say this advice to you and I do need to take it myself. And I ain't gonna cap. But says you have done literally nothing wrong. You know this is real internet shit, and I'm I'm not I'm not a big fan of parasocial relationships. But it's real easy to fall into them when you kind of watch. I mean, I watch Stephanie for hours, bro. Stephanie has put money in my pocket. She's helped my channel out, so I can't help but feel a sense of like it's loyalty, bro. And that's what that's the word, yeah. I can't help but feel a sense of loyalty to a human being that doesn't even know me, and I don't even really know them. But after you, not only do I watch hours of her content, but I edit hours of her content. So I'm getting a double dosage of her face, her voice, her mannerism. So it's like, this might be a little corny or cringy, but you get to a point where you feel a tad bit protected. Like, damn, I, kinda, I feel like I kind of know this human. And it seems like you're hurting this human that I may potentially like and know in real life. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Fuck this nigga, bro. I don't want this nigga head top for real, for real. It's smoke. We smoking on that avocado pack. You didn't grab it because of the Me Too movement. You didn't grab it because there was a hashtag on Twitter. You didn't grab it because that's sexual assault if he didn't want you to. So sorry. Um, no. no. In 2017, sorry. I posted an Instagram <laughs> picture of me sitting on like this red lifeguard. Um, Thing and I said, Gorgeous. I was so scared to even talk about what happened that I captioned it something just to make me feel like I had a voice and I had strength. I posted, sometimes you gotta be your own damn lifeguard, even if your head is too heavy to float. Hashtag me too. You got a big ass head too. That's a great that caption. Over two years ago. I got a big ass head. That I, I really in YouTube, I can really say, feeling like I had a voice and feeling like I could say something and someone would listen to me honestly saving me Aww. i was so happy that there was a way for me and my story or at least make other people feel like hey you're not weird for having this trauma you're not weird that you live life differently now you're definitely not weird and you want to discredit all of that because you had a bad date i think that's Disgusting but reckless for your audience. We smoking on that Obaka B pack. reckless way to use your platform. Five hours wasted. Nothing. Five hours wasted. Nothing. You are freezing out on the. What type? Hey Siri. What's the weather in New York City right now, please? It appears to be clear right now in New York. And what? Temperature of 50 degrees. 50 mother degrees.
That's cold. That's 20 degrees from frozen. Did he cuddle me? Did he try to keep me warm? No, nothing. Oh my God, what a loser. I'm sorry if the cold made you feel uncomfortable. I'm confused. How this nigga entertain it, bro? Not even throwing no shots, no, like, I'm like trying to find out the, like, where's the factor? I'm not even under the impression that I'm super entertaining. I think it's a work in progress. I think I'll reach a point in my career where I'll be super entertaining to folks. Right now, I'm working on figuring things out. I'm trying to understand what's the humor, what's the vibe while still, while still being true to me. But like, I'm trying to understand what's the catch. Like, what's the, what's the, what's the hook with this thing? Did he cuddle me? Did he try to keep me warm? Is it his like, no. Realness. Oh that's what it is. my god. So what that's, a loser. Not, that's not really real. I'm sorry if the Cause he's not being real, bro. He's just being a dickhead. Um, no, nothing. Oh my god. What a loser. I guess that's a form of I'm realness. sorry I'm if the cold bro. made you feel uncomfortable. One of the biggest reasons I was even scared to make this video was because I knew that it looked stupid. I everything sounds dramatic and, oh really you were scared? Why did you stay? And it there was nothing. Like I felt like I had I don't know why, in any other situation, nobody ever needs a reason to feel scared or unsafe or uncomfortable. Look, I'm so glad you said like that. I I needed to have a reason. No, you and didn't, And I did though. it. And so I stayed, and I tried to make him less angry and not mad at me. And I was scared he was going to say, then why did you stay if you were so scared? I'm sorry, there's miscommunication. I'm really tired. I should have gone, I should have gone home earlier. I'm like, well, you went... You certainly wasted my time too if you're saying you should have gone home earlier, meaning you didn't really value the time spent. Because if you have a good time, you don't regret staying long because you had a good time. Do you ever say to someone, do you ever- Someone that, oh, I should have gone home earlier if you were having a good time? No. Shut the hell up, bro. You don't understand nuance. People leave when they're having a good time all the time. It's called having obligations and having other shit to do, bro. Kakarot. Come back here, looking at his haircut. <laughs> I'm like, well, you went. You certainly wasted my time too. If you're saying you should have gone home earlier, meaning you didn't really value the time spent. Because if you have a good time, you don't regret staying long. Because you, you really sound a like time. a gerbil, bro. Do you ever if say a gerbil someone, had a voice, do you ever someone that oh, I should have gone home earlier. If you were having a good time, no, that means he wasn't having a good time. Wasted my time, mother. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't having a good time because I wasn't having a good time, but I was too scared of you because you made me feel manipulated and mm. fearful of what you would do. You mm. made me scared of your anger. And so, no, I wasn't having a good time. This wasn't an old clip from years ago. This was recent from his trip to New York City. I'm going to leave the edited version that Shade Bung posted linked in the description. A lot has happened even after that. There's just been a lot of online bullying and I'm someone that <laughs> I've been through high school I bullying. Like I've, these I've talked about it a lot more on my other channel. He knows that I've talked about it with him before. It just was a gross abuse of power and an abuse of, a, of his platform and his voice. First I felt Again, like more shame and embarrassment because a lot of the people that he tagged are people that he knew that I would say, oh my God, I've watched her since high school or, oh, I love her, you know, I did a collab with her. And these are people that I was since high school or, oh. Ain't no way this nigga trying to make a lame ass in and out of jokes. Like, bruh, you lame as shit. A lot of the people that he tagged are people that he knew that I would say, oh my God, I've watched her since high school or, oh, I love her, you know, I did a collab with her. And these are people that I respected. I don't want to believe that they know the full story of what he's done. I also felt scared because now it felt like if I say something, it's not just going up against Nick, but look at all the friends he has. You know, who, who do I have? And I just felt oh. like I couldn't say anything because it would be going up against all of these people. Big sis, I don't even know who the folks is. About someone who something some something happened someone did something to me and so there's just a lot that broke my spirits or i'm gonna get what i want and i was telling the story and one of the inside joke from that story was in and out of sleep and you don't understand but then i told a few other youtubers i tagged them on instagram um as well as my friends and i they all know i was like they know the story and they the the the, the thing that the thing the 
did he just have a stroke or something? What the hell is that? Why dog say? I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Sleep, and you don't understand. But then I told a few other YouTubers. I tagged them on Instagram, um, as well as my friends, and I. They all know. I was like, they know the story, and they. I'm sorry. The major thing that they take away from that was the in and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. I've just been in and out of sleep, and I don't know what's going on, but, you know, I got things to do. I just got, ah, I got things to do! You've been, have you been in and out of sleep? Oh, in and out of sleep. Oh, my gosh. Just... In and out of sleep right now. <laughs> They're like, what the f***? That is the most obnoxious, bizarre thing they've ever heard. Like, what the f***? Quite literally in and out of sleep, bro. Not only that, but... Them jokes, they was trying to like them shit. In and out of sleep, we turn something that really bothered me. I hate to be that guy, but is you gonna eat all that food, bro, or is you just gonna waste that shit? I really hate to be that guy, but I'm just saying, bro. Niggas could really never mind, bro. Shut. What is this nigga even chatting about? He giving bare details to the story. It's like so obvious that the story is lame as shit and not even. In and out real. of sleep, we turn something that really bothered me into something that we can laugh about. Ha ha ha. When we are at the club. I'm telling you, I should have put this on YouTube, on YouTube. But also, I mean, it's just you have to laugh about things to get over things. That's just how what I believe. Well, all four, well, it's us four plus the gay couple, the other gay married couple, and the girl and the gay guy. So it was all like twelve of us. We're all sitting together, and we're like in and out of sleep, in and out of sleep, in and out of sleep. Nigga, like, no, bro, stop, please stop, bro. Just eat the food. <laughs> Why are you talking so much? What is this? Is not a mukbang? Why are you not eating, bro? Four plus the gay couple. Just shut up. And the girl and the gay guy. So it was all like 12 of us. We're all sitting together and we're like, in and out of sleep. Right. In and out of sleep. I'm not even going to repeat you. Like, I'm not trying to be associated with your bullshit. And then the people around oh, us. What the fuck? In and out of sleep. And, and, I and I, me and Honey started bawling with tears running down. We're like, where are the people screaming in and out of sleep, bro? It seemed like only one person was, and that was your friend. <laughs> and she said it twice, in and out, in and out. I bet you in and out burger like, oh yeah, <laughs> I like this promo. <laughs> Disney Channel ass story. And then and then the club owner came out and then the whole club started chanting in and out of sleep and then a bunch of girls with signs that said in and out of sleep came out and there were bottles bottles with my name on them there was a giant avocado that walked through the door in and out of sleep and i got a call from in and out burger they said that my in and out of sleep idea is amazing they want to sponsor me for the in and out of sleep burger it's actually insane that he rewatched this and was like, oh yeah, this gonna hit. I don't understand how folks be editing shit that they make. Oh, he probably doesn't edit his own videos. I do leave in a lot of cringy shit, but that's because it's just for the funny factor. Not only is he capping, but he's yapping and he's not even doing it well. It's so obvious. It's like, and me and this girl started bawling. I should have put it on YouTube. <laughs> In and out of sleep, we turn something that really bothered me into something that we can laugh about. <laughs> when we are at the club, funny. I'm telling you, I should have put this on YouTube, on YouTube. But also, I mean, it's just you have to laugh about things to get over things. That's just how what I believe. Well, all four, well, it's us four plus the gay couple, the other gay married couple, and the girl and the gay guy. So it's all like twelve of us. We're all sitting together and we're like in and out of sleep. 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 And then the people around us. In and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. And I, me and Honey started bawling with tears running down. We're like, in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh my God, it was so funny. And we're like, in and out of sleep. In and out of sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you actually do this, Stephanie? <laughs> Did you, you actually like in and out of sleep? Bullying right? like this happens online. Most of the times, a bully will say it's a joke. Mm, they can't take a joke. Yeah, I see and what you're saying. And sometimes I can see where they're coming from. A nah, joke is funny, not teasing. 
but what was the purpose of posting it onto his Instagram? I don't think that anyone who didn't understand yeah, the story would find it that all. funny. Oh, in and out of sleep, like maybe food coma. But I don't think he posted it because it was just a knee slapper. Like, no, he was so trying funny. to like. I want everyone to laugh because it's such a funny joke. I truly think that the only reason you. he posted it was for me to see it. Yeah. And was for me to see that. And this is kind of when I learned what was happening to me. And, and that gave me a lot of clarity. <laughs> Prior to this, I felt like everything was my fault. I had caused this, but there's actually a lot of people who feel this way. And what it's an actual thing Stephanie that manipulators Lynn. use. And the victim, they either don't notice it or they feel like they're at fault. One of the things that really stood out was the word audacity. You won't believe the audacity Yo. you will have, but I have lots of receipts and audio clips. The definition- I had pointed it out, tribe, tribe. Did y'all not remember me pointing out how I didn't like the fact that he said audacity? Like, like Stephanie was in the wrong or something, bro? The audacity. You know, I feel like they're at fault. One of the things that really stood out was the word audacity, you won't believe the audacity people have, but I have lots of receipts and audio clips. The definition of audacity means rude or disrespectful behavior. Mm -hmm. I know that Nick is really offended because I, I was being really I rude and self-serving <laughs> and I had the audacity to do a lot of things and I just want to apologize that I had the audacity to say no to you because I felt unsafe. I'm sorry mm. that I had the audacity to open my doors and let you into my home and then you took advantage of that. And I'm sorry that I had the audacity to make you feel like I changed my mind. Stay but I think it's really this. important that we all know that a yes is not all inclusive. Just because you say yes, doesn't mean you're saying yes to everything for the rest of forever. That's mm -hmm. incredibly predatory and manipulative. What was the purpose of all of this? To hurt Veronica? To hurt me? To get your sucked I'm gonna <laughs> you know this is my side of the story there's nothing else more to say I have nothing else more to say I want to heal and I want to move on and I want to make my thoughts and I feel like a lot of this video was me addressing Nick because I know that he was watching I want to talk to you guys for a second Hi, which I normally do and I just want to say thank you so much for giving me a platform and giving me a oh, way to no. reach you guys and feel like I have a voice I was already feeling really scared really and I can't nice. imagine it's how much right more now. frightened and how much more threatened I would feel if I didn't have a place to put this video to be able to hear my unmanipulated side. And I just want to say thank you. I'll be back in a couple days. I'm going to take a couple days off and, I don't know, <laughs> play with my dogs and I'll just be back breathe. with regular mukbangs. I hope making take this video not only real, clarified real. things for you guys, but also if any of you guys feel this way or f have felt this way before, then I just want to say it's not your audacity. It's actually just your basic human fundamental rights Facts. to say no. Mm. You heard that? Hey, hey, hey. You have the right to be treated with respect, to express your feelings, opinions, and wants, to set your own priorities, to say no without feeling guilty, to get what you pay for, to have opinions different than others, to take care of and protect yourself from being threatened physically, mentally, or emotionally, to create your own happy and healthy life. These fundamental human rights represent your boundaries. I need every tribe member and any person that watches this video or watches Stephanie's video to understand these things for real. For real. But her emotions felt heartfelt and genuine, I'm not gonna hold you. But that could just be acting. I'm a person that tries to understand different perspectives. So let's put aside our bias for Stephanie and see what Avakadu got to say. Today I'm responding to Stephanie Sue and the video she- I'm already done. <laughs> Let me chill. I'm sorry. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm literally playing. Today I'm responding to Stephanie Sue and the video she made about me entitled, Why I'm Scared of Nikocado Avocado. Now, firstly, this video here is not a hateful video. It's not a hate video. So I'm asking you, please don't go send bullying, harassment, hate, anything of that nature to anybody involved in result or in response to my video here, okay? I'm telling you right up front, I'm against those things. I'm denouncing them and I'm asking you, just be respectful. Now, obviously everyone's been asking me, where's your video? We've been waiting, are you gonna respond? But honestly, because of the holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and how time sensitive everything was, 
I decided to wait just a little bit until I felt it was an appropriate time to speak. Okay, bro. I have a lot to cover in this video. I'm gonna go over every single aspect and address it head on. All right? I never do so this, I'm but asking I, you, like, I'm so sorry. Please listen I hope to it's not as much as you can, as much as your schedules, your time allows for, because everything is equally important in my view. What I'm gonna tell you at the beginning isn't more or less critical than what I'm gonna tell you at the end. All right, I have screenshots. I have photos. I have audio clips. I have various pieces of the story that Nigga, Stephanie just show to it, bro. So let's go. The first thing I'd like to address are the photos in our house. Now, again, I don't know what's more important, this or the voice messages or the. I'm gonna tackle this first. Get it over because this is why I say repeating a lot. There's no, no excuse Maybe to be taking photos of someone's home without their permission. Why would you be taking photos? That's creepy. That's stalkerish. Are you dangerous? Are you gonna break in and steal a lamp? Are, are you gonna leak her ad? Like, why would you take photos? And in Stephanie's video, she implied, well, she said that she had gone to the bathroom. She used the restroom, and when she came back, she had checked the security footage to see that I was taking photos of her house without That's her what knowledge. She said. She said. And therefore, it made her question her safety, the overall peace of mind in her disprove home. Disprove it. Just and disprove that's it. That's a lie. That okay. is hundred percent. Show lie. me. You know what the viewers will see? They will see upon arrival, the moment I stepped into her home, she gave me a whole house tour. I don't know if I went to every room, but I walked through, oh gosh, five, six, seven different places. She took me from room to room, to bathroom to bathroom, bedroom to bedroom, even outside to the pool, to the swing, everything. You will also see that upon arrival, she pointed out various pieces of furniture. And I asked her, as a fellow YouTuber, that's a beautiful couch, where's that from? Oh, it's from this place. Oh, that's a beautiful light fixture. A whole house tour. And she was very excited to show it off to me, as I would be too. It's a very luxurious house, one of the most expensive houses I've ever seen. You'll also see on this security footage that we had a very long, long FaceTime with my husband, Orlin, while I was in her home. And during that FaceTime, she proceeded to show off her refrigerator, her microwave that slides out or something from the counter, the marble countertop. She pulled out her phone and said, oh, this is the type of marble I had. And then she went to the stove and showed us the stove. Oh, this is Thermador this, Thermador that. She showed us the, the water spigot that's used to put uh, water into pots. She showed Orlin the sofa, the lights. She gave him his own version of a house tour. And she's claiming that I was taking photos for, no, for an odd reason that she has no idea what it was for. And that's what made her feel unsafe. But she was sitting right there as I took a photo watching me. Watching me. What she's saying here is so incriminating. She's making it look like I did something without her knowledge that they're- Uh, why does she look a little uncomfortable though? <laughs> why does she look- First of all, I ain't gonna lie. I, that is- this is Big Sis. And she is married. But Stephanie is bad. That's Big Sis though therefore threatened her peace of mind or implied the overall safety of her home was in jeopardy. Stephanie, you painted the stage for your viewers that you had no idea I was taking photos and that was the reason you're questioning her safety. That's the only thing you supposedly had on me. And you- Well, that's because she had no idea you were taking photos while she wasn't there. That's the only thing you supposedly had on me. And you knew that probably wasn't enough to emotionally sway everybody, which is why you made half of your video discussing sexual assault, PTSD, the Me Too movement, all of which have nothing to do with our collaboration. It is so ethically wrong to insinuate that I was you taking photos while you were too. in the bathroom. And you had no idea as to why that was the case. That is deliberate manipulation in order to sell a story. And out of the few photos I took, they're only of the same room the kitchen, and the seating area. I didn't walk anywhere else and take any other photos. I wasn't looking around for suspicious things. I was admiring her furniture, admiring her. And she says, I don't have fancy light fixtures. I'm sorry, that's the first house I've been in that looks like. Oh, bro. I was admiring her furniture, admiring her. Bro, is this not security footage right here? What the fuck? Whoa. You taking a picture of the kitchen with the entire security layout of her crib in the center of the photo? Flag on a play. I'm just saying, bro, flag on a plate. I love hamburger. No. I love <laughs> and she says, I don't have fancy light fixtures. I'm sorry. That's the first house I've been in that looks like that. This is a multi-million dollar home. I was impressed. I was happy. Okay, why you keep on mentioning the price, bro? Is you jealous? Like, oh my God. You just keep on mentioning it's expensive. It's multi-million dollars. It's the best furniture. Oh. I'm just looking around for suspicious things. I was admiring her furniture, admiring her. And she says, I don't have fancy light fixtures. I'm sorry. That's the first house I've been in that looks like that. This is a multi-million dollar home. I was impressed. I was having Get your to money out in, nigga. to show it off to me. That shouldn't be used as material as to why you felt threatened by me. Absolutely not. Why would you lie about such a... Why would you lie about something like that? I don't understand. Why would you lie about it? I even took a selfie. I even took a selfie. Look at me. And I sent it to my husband. Oh, oh. And let me play you. Let me play selfie. what I sent to my husband. I'm Here's a screenshot of Orlin watching <laughs> us through the house tour. Look, I'm literally pointing toward the couch. This is innocent stuff. This was, this was like... Your husband looks better than you. Oh, look at my house. Where, I'm blamed. Look at my sofa. Where's it from? It looks beautiful. It actually, he does. You know... We are YouTubers too. It's not like I'm the milkman come to rob a lamp from her. Your husband is enabling you. Alright, right. Hold on, you ain't got iMessenger? Like it's almost, like, it's annoying, but theirs will be like, it's an intercom sound speaker like throughout every room in the house. And the lady will go, someone's at the front door. And they'll go, someone's at the front door. Texting through Facebook Messenger? That's back. your house. Or 
Oh my god, you talk so much. Yo, uh, I'm not even going back. My dog Thomas, someone's at the front door. Someone's at the side door. So, okay, bro. Like, you could have just left it at the first one and the message would have been understood. He pulled Lemley. Someone's at the front gate. Or someone's out back. Or someone opened the second story window. And she talks to you and stuff. I really want that. That's really nice. That's what I sent. That's what... That's what I said to him. Why would you lie about something like this? When you knew you get... It's not like I walked into her house like this. That'd be mad suspicious. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is Veronica Wang. Veronica Wang is a fellow mukbanger here on YouTube. She's a YouTuber. And this lady, Veronica, had problems on the internet with a bunch of other mukbangers one year ago. Bro, I ain't gonna hold you. Did Big Sis respond to this? Because I... Look, bruh. I, I'm, I know my body. I prefer to keep it more on the respectful side simply because I don't want to push more negativity out into the world, bro. I've done enough of that. I'm going to keep it all the way honest, bro. I refuse to sit through an hour of this, bro. <laughs> Please, Big Sis, did you respond to this? Oh my God, Big Sis responded to this. Hold on. She got her makeup done. She's wearing a black dress. Is she, is she in that mode? Is she in that mode? Because let's not forget... There is another side to Stephanie, and it involves true crime and discovering shit. Because the Stephanie that was crying was not the true crime figuring out what the situation is, Stephanie. And, you know, love them both. I love them both. But this is the dangerous Stephanie. <laughs> this is the Stephanie that can send niggas' careers packing. <laughs> Let me hear what you got to say, big sis. Come on. Hi, we're back here. I've got my computer. Hold on. No, 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 no. No. You go on normal speed. Hi. We're back here. I've Hi. got my computer Big on this sis. side, my fiance on this side, and Husband a bunch Mango. of waters here. And we're just gonna jump into it because today's video, w I never thought mission. that I would ever, ever be making this video because when I said that I wanted to move on, I really, truly did want to move on. I wanted to work on healing myself, right. trying to turn something bad into something somewhat positive, right. and just try to be happy again. But it just seems like Nick cannot help himself but continue to lie to me, manipulate his friends, manipulate the truth, manipulate my words, and manipulate you guys. He thinks that he showed a lot of receipts that really have nothing to do with this situation and I actually have a lot of proof, evidence, receipts, whatever you call it and a lot of this stuff I had prior to making my first video that honestly if Nick had these receipts he would have pulled them out when he made that first video Spirit but I team. chose not Spirit to team. because this was not supposed to be drama. This was supposed to be me voicing my concern for my safety, my home privacy and how I felt about another creator abusing their platform. But right. Nick, if you want to bring out all of the petty receipts and try to assassinate my character, then here you go. With that being said, please keep <laughs> keeping in mind, I'm going to be referencing two things only. Oh yeah, now we here. Now we alive. I ain't gonna lie, we awake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted her to just turn up a little bit, bro. Because I didn't want to see her cry again, bro. I'm like, damn, Stephanie, I understand that this hurts you. But you can't forget that you're an amazing, intelligent, very, very communicative human being. And you are very good at expressing information. So just tap into that side a little bit and send this nigga packing. We're back. <clears throat> Had to make a food pit stop. I got me some leftover pasta and meatballs. We're back here. Uh, I've got my computer on this side, my fiance on this side, and a bunch of waters here. And I'm so excited. We're just gonna jump into it because today's video, I never thought that I would ever, ever be making this video because when I said that I wanted to move on, I really truly did want to move on. I wanted to work on healing myself, trying to turn something bad into something somewhat positive, right. and just try to be happy again. But it just seems like Nick cannot help himself but continue to lie to me, manipulate his friends, manipulate the truth, manipulate my words and manipulate you guys. Mm. He thinks that he showed a lot of receipts that really have nothing to do with the situation and I actually have a lot of proof, evidence, receipts, whatever you call it and a lot of this stuff I had prior to making my first video. That honestly, if Nick had these receipts, he would have pulled them out when he made that first video but I chose not to because this was not supposed to be drama. This was supposed to be me voicing my concern for my safety, my home privacy and how I felt about another creator abusing their platform. 
But Nick, if you want to bring out all of the petty receipts and try to assassinate my character, then here you go. With that being said, please keep two things in mind. I'm going to be referencing two things a lot throughout the entirety of the video. The first being that there is unreleased footage that Nick has, and only he has it, and it's of the second mukbang that we filmed with me, Nick, and Zach. Now, this is the footage that is him interrogating me. He thinks I set him up and made faces in it. I was actually just so freaking terrified and scared in that moment. He refuses to release it for whatever reason. Please release it. You have my full consent and let the people decide was I making faces to set you up or was I truly scared. Now the second thing I'm going to be referencing is my home security footage. Now I'm unable to release it to the public because California law but Nick give me your consent because you claim that I lied about so many things whereas my home security footage says otherwise. So give me your consent if you truly think I'm a liar, if you truly think I'm a manipulator, if you truly think that your side is the truth let me release the footage. So those are the two things that I'll be referencing. Other than that, everything else... It makes me believe her more. I'm not even gonna cat to you, bro. Now, the second thing I'm gonna be referencing is my home security footage. Now, I'm unable to release it to the public because California law, but Nick, give me your consent because you claim that I lied about so many things, whereas my home security footage says otherwise. So give me your consent if you truly think I'm a liar, if you truly think I'm a manipulator, if you truly think that your side is the truth, let me release the footage. So those are the two things that I'll be referencing. Other than that, everything else I have evidence for, so I'm just gonna get started with the video. So Nick starts off his video talking about my house, which is a topic that it seems that he very much likes to talk about in videos on his channel. And I'm a little bit thrown off by this because he completely tried to assassinate my character with this. no proof of what actually happened. And he said that the minute that he came over, I gave him this crazy whirlwind tour showing off, saying, guess how much that couch was, I don't even sound guess like how you much that oven and I don't was, even know you like and that. telling him about all of these things, that is not what happened. When have I ever showed off to you, Nick? It seems like you talk about my house more than I do. Let's first talk about her house, how... Uh, jealous but also happy for her like but jealous doesn't she have one of those ovens it's like a five layer oven who uses that i don't know i really want a beautiful kitchen like stephanie's her kitchen is perfect just because stephanie has a beautiful house when she does i'm not saying like oh stephanie's i low-key need that security system i mean a, a cat will walk by and the, the fire department will come okay and all of what you saw in those videos are prior to him ever being invited. Wait, where's the joke, bruh? Who uses that? I don't know. I really want a beautiful kitchen like Stephanie's. Her kitchen is perfect. Just because Stephanie has a beautiful house when she does. I'm not saying like, oh, Stephanie's, I low key need that security system. I mean, a, a cat will walk by and the, the fire department will come, okay? And all <laughs> you saw in those videos are prior to him ever being invited into my home. And the Damn. only conversation that we had of my house prior to you entering my home was this. You asked me, we are renting our own place, finally, lol, and saving to buy a nice home in the future. How are you liking your new house? And I said, oh my god, yay, that's so exciting, it'll be so much more comfortable to film and stuff. I'm always paranoid when family's around that I'm being too loud. And it's nice to have some space to breathe since I'm always home, lol. But now he claims the minute he came over, I said, did you see my oven? Did you look at it? He spoke about my oven prior to coming over to my house. Like a five layer oven, who uses that? And then he goes on to talk about more about money. You think I'd get murdered before you do? You have the most money. Does it work like that? <laughs> <laughs> rich biss. I would buy that over regular biss. Cause I'm a rich biss. Oh, he's yeah. rich. I did not, did you not guys, say that. I, I I got a ride in her Tesla today. Wow. <laughs> Nick, no, I never showed off to you. And it's- Bro, who is this third nigga? I'm just not realizing he don't even say nothing. Oven prior to coming over to my house. Like a five layer oven, who uses that? And then he goes on to talk about more about money. You think I'd get murdered before you do? You have the most money. Does it work like that? <laughs> Rich piss. He's like reacting like how I'm reacting, low key. I'm a rich piss. Oh, he's yeah. rich. I did not say that. I did not say that. I got a ride in her Tesla today. <laughs> wow. Right, no. even, bro, you see his face? He's like, okay. I ain't gonna lie, I see what the, I see what the appeal is. The veneer of authenticity and somebody who speaks unfilteredly. Oh, he's yeah. rich. I did not say that. I got a ride in her Tesla today. <laughs> wow. Nick, no, I never showed off to you. 
and it seems like you are the one that likes to talk about it and you are the one that likes to put words to it such as what's the name of your fancy security system Yo. i want the best of the best for my future home Hello, you were the one that, that came into my home under the disguise of wanting to ask questions for your future home saying oh my gosh is that that fancy viking oven you pointed at my pot filler and asked me if it was a pasta noodle dryer you asked me how much my couch was then i took you into a different room and then you saw my other couch and then you said is that the same couch trisha paytas has how much is that one and I think you were happy to show it off to me. I would never show that off to you or anyone for that matter. And your big waha moment in your video was that you said that I let you take a picture in front of me. So everything I said prior to that was a lie. Oh, how could I ever be uncomfortable or feel unsafe when I was right there when you took one picture, right? Well, this is a picture that you showed in your video. And then you said that you took it because big you wanted sis, to you see my lighting uh, setup, which I do remember. You said, can I take a picture of your lighting setup? Whoa, 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 whoa. Your lighting setup? Like your YouTube lighting setup? Because he's kind of far. Am I tripping? And then you said that you took it because you wanted to see my lighting setup, which I do remember. You said, can I take a picture of Must your lighting setup? Must be like setup? the chandelier. I said, yes. I don't know about you, but typically I'd like to get a closer shot <laughs> of the actual lighting setup if I wanted a picture of the lighting setup. When this nigga took a picture of the lighting setup from the next town over. Why is he so far back? Because he wasn't taking a picture of the lighting setup. Wow. Wow. Bad rain, bad rain. This gerbil looking ass nigga is a fucking liar. But typically I'd like to get a closer shot of the actual lighting setup. Right. If I wanted a picture of the lighting setup. When I did go to the restroom, you did take pictures behind my back and I didn't approve of those pictures. And you kept trying to make it seem like I'm crazy, I'm a manipulator for being scared of you releasing these pictures. So then you went on to release the exact pictures that I would never want on the internet. Was it, was it, I knew it. I literally knew it, bro. Come on. The you released little... a picture of my kitchen with my security feed straight dab in the middle and you didn't have the courtesy to blur the it The whole out. layout of her crib. I don't know were interested in that picture. Was it the kitchen cabinets? Because you could have gotten more of the cabinets from a different angle. They got that shit the in the curtain? center. Because you could have gotten more of the curtain from a different angle. Right. Now, I, without your consent, cannot release the security footage of you taking pictures when I go to the restroom, but you release this picture. And if you zoom in closely, you're alone in my kitchen taking this picture. So you took the picture when I was in the bathroom. I have never recorded anyone ever without their consent. I took a photo with her consent. And then you went on to further assassinate my character by saying that you and Orlin were FaceTiming and I gave him another whirlwind tour of how much money this couch is. And you know that's not true. You went around the living areas, you pointed at the couch, you pointed at my countertops. Orlin asked me if it was quartz or marble and I said I think it's terracotta. And you guys said no, that's a pattern, doesn't mean anything. And I said oh okay, I don't know then. <laughs> Seeing this I don't was even weird, know terracotta is. I don't know anyone who takes screenshots of FaceTimes. Speaking of FaceTiming Orlin, this is where my fiance wants to say a couple words. You do a Husband lot of mango. these microaggressive things that nobody could really talk about. Yes, and that's why I felt so scared to talk in my first video because technically, are you really that scary, I thought? But no. these are the things that you do. You take pictures, you post it. I don't know why you ever would think that that's okay to post. I mean, it's... Husband it's Mango! So strange, you know, when when uh, he was showing... <laughs> nigga called you he strange. He said, hey, let me show you what food we're eating. He switched the camera on his phone, but instead of pointing the camera down onto the kitchen counter, it was... Where the food is. <laughs> but it was to my face for a good three seconds. So my reaction was, that was okay, now this is awkward. That's Do weird. I act like I don't know what's going on? Do I say something? Do nah, I turn you gotta, around? Do you gotta I, confront... But at the same time, I don't want to overreact. It's just... A little weird. That is and true. It's like one of those things where you can't call him out on it and be like, what are you doing? Because then you seem insane. But it's also another thing because Nick knows that my fiance is very private. He doesn't really like being in front of cameras. It's kind of also like the picture. Yeah. It's like you ask, then that's okay. But when you do it so weirdly, then, then it makes it like, I don't want to seem like I'm very, so very strange. That's why after, after he switched the camera to yeah. the food, I walk up to him and or and introduce myself because uh, i don't want to seem like i'm this guy that's 
Like you're so important. I, or I pretend like I don't know what's going or on. Or so you're I just not kind of like take charge and say, hey, you know, let me just properly introduce myself. Or yes. instead of pretending, you know, nothing happened. Take you charge in your own crib. And yes. It makes people uncomfortable, but they can't voice their concerns because they would seem like the crazy ones. And then if they do voice your concerns, you say something like, it was just innocent admiring of her home. I was admiring her furniture. And this is innocent stuff. It's not like I walked into her house like this. <laughs> you did not come into did our you, house did doing you this, speed up the video but too? you did a lot of things that we weren't comfortable with. Why would you lie about such a, why would you lie about something like that? Okay, so give me your consent to release the security footage. There's another thing actually on Zach's channel. At the end of it, there's like one piece of chicken left. And we turn off the cameras and we go, well, how Zach does his collabs is very similar to mine. Remember say we know how to edit? We're YouTubers, we edit all the time. Zach literally, every time, say he's eating a chicken leg, he'll eat the chicken leg and when he's done, he'll cut it. Take a break, wipe the sweat off, it's very hot in his box. Take some water, adjust the mics, think of what's gonna happen next and then go for it. So we edit after every chicken leg or every bite. And the last scene, we had discussed, it was Stephanie's idea that she would have the last leg and I would look at her like, ooh, what you doing? Cause I'm, you know, the fat pig that loves to eat. And it was literally following what me and Trisha had done where we sat there with our noodles and we looked at each other and we glared. Well, people are taking that clip now and saying, ah, here's proof of Nick looking at Stephanie all creepily. Nigga, cause you low key was? was? I, didn't or... even I, didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't even realize until when I watched the video that I was like, she wasn't looking back at me either. I didn't... It was a YouTube video. I was, there was no thought into it. Looking. So you mean to tell me that she was looking at somebody and you didn't realize that she wasn't looking back at you until you watched the video of you looking at her and her not look. If I'm looking at somebody, bro, and they're not looking back at me, that's why, why wouldn't I notice that? Here's proof of Nick looking at Stephanie all creepily. And that was her idea. I didn't even count. I didn't even, I didn't even realize until when I watched the video that I was like, she wasn't looking back at me either. I didn't, it was a YouTube video. I was, there was no thought into it looking at each other. She didn't even look at me. And I say to myself, why didn't she, why would she say to do this where we look at each other who's going to go for the last chicken leg? And then when the cameras are rolling, she just looks at the Bro, screen. She like she she her business. Doing over there. I ain't gonna lie, she looked like she minded her business trying to figure out how to get out of this creepy ass situation you placed her in. She said to do this where we look at each other who's gonna go for the last chicken leg and then when the cameras are rolling, she just looks at the screen as if she doesn't know what I'm doing over there. Like, what the hell, man? This is one of those moments where I saw this video and you had said this blatant lie with so much conviction, no evidence, just such a strong voice that I was like, <gasps> Did I do that? And so I reached I out to Zach and he has a full unedited version of that. And this is what happened. Sped up, no breaks in between, no jump cuts. That's very important that you said that because I'm an editor. I, I'm this, hold on. This is definitely not edited. This is definitely not edited. <laughs> what did I say? I'm like, where? Zach Choi, is this your video? Like, this what you do? You don't speak in here or nothing? That water look good as shit. All right, bye. I got you some good comments. So she had the last thing, right? They were eating, I was just sitting here, and I was going like this. Like just- Here's the thing, here's the thing. I don't proclaim to be a body language expert, but I did study micro expressions for an abnormal amount of time, so I can, I can spot them just a little bit. Look at Zach Choi's face when Avakudu said, I got you, Carlos. Look at his face. I got you some- Look at that slight frown that popped up. Comments. So Oh, 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 you see it? There it is. There it is. And that frown isn't like a frown of anger. It seemed like a frown of, oh God. You know what I mean? Because his face goes back to normal immediately. 
Like, just be real, man. No. Just be real. You and be real, I you I weirdo. I didn't realize until I did, I didn't when I watched that. the video that I was like, she wasn't looking back at me either. Why would she say to do this where we look at each other who's going to go for the last chicken leg? And then when the cameras are rolling, she just looks at the screen as if she doesn't know what I'm doing. Your story don't even that. make sense, right? We're eating. I was just sitting here. What was I even eating? That shit. Cheese on like, chicken? What the hell, man? So, what are the you hell, lying man? Or is that footage lying? <laughs> now, the next thing that he brings <laughs> up in his video is about Veronica. See, I love this out of you, Stephanie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead and bring out the raw mango in you. Your hand. Dissect this nigga. I bet you if you peel him back layer by layer, you'll just find none but rotten avocados. <laughs> now, the next thing that he brings up in his video is about Veronica. The way that he approached this topic, I thought was so incredibly manipulative because he made it seem like I had this dirty little secret, and I don't. These are receipts that really didn't matter in the long span of things, and I think that the reason he didn't understand that or didn't care to is because Maybe he doesn't know the difference between talking to someone and then posting it together onto the internet versus talking about someone and then posting it onto the internet. Those are very, very, very different things. Very different things. So I'm going to read you guys some of the text messages that he showed because he failed to read a lot of the important parts of it. I wanted to make this docuseries and I wanted to highlight not only everything that happened with Shukbang and including what happened between Veronica and I, but also all of the personal conflicts that were involved. I wanted it to be less drama focused, but more about the personal struggles behind all of the decisions that were made. That's on brand My goal for would you. be that things that need to be talked out can be and would shine a new perspective and light onto all parties involved. So Nick is framing his story as if I absolutely hate Veronica and I just couldn't wait to talk shit about Veronica and I want to do all of these exposing videos about her with Nick because I want drama and I want views. And to give you guys some perspective, this is what I said to Veronica, which Nick has never seen. We didn't leave off on the best terms. And she said, hey Steph, I hope you're doing well. I know we left off on a really horrible foot, but I just wanted to let you know I've missed you. I also recently got accepted into a couple culinary schools in California, so I might be I might be moving there for a year. I'll be there this week looking at apartments and was wondering if you'd like to meet up for food to talk. Let me know your thoughts. I responded, hey, yeah, I know it's been forever since we last spoke. We did leave off in such a shitty way, but I'm glad you reached out. I know it's super awkward after everything that's happened, but I'm genuinely happy that things are going super well for you. Bottom of my heart, congrats on all your success with culinary school. Let me know what days you'd be here. I'd love to talk. Now, at this point, I did have this idea of doing a docu-series because I felt like, well, Veronica might be in LA and in the eyes publicly, nobody really understood what happened behind the scenes because I never wanted to speak on it without So is Veronica. that beefing for real? And so I thought that it'd be very nice to sit down. It had been a couple months. The drama had kind of concluded and to just show that there's a lot of real people behind the show drama. growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect I that. I wanted to showcase different perspectives of not just me, but Veronica and of Nick. You know, I would also like to showcase a side of you that shows that you're not just here for the drama, but you're here for the underdogs and the words she said to you hurt you and not just angered you. I would also like people to see a little glimpse of vulnerability from Nick Akato, obviously to your comfort, just like how my perspective changed when I actually got to meet you in person. I don't know how he took this and twisted it so out of context like to make nice it seem like I am obsessed with Veronica and I need to get an apology from her and she did me so dirty and I just will not let it go. I ran the idea by Veronica. This is what I DM'd her after we spoke on the phone. I said, I'm glad we got to speak on the phone. I know we barely touched the surface on how we felt, but at least we know what kind at least we kind of know where each other's minds are. I hope I communicated everything across well, but I do want to mention that I don't want the entire thing to be so past motivated. I also thought it would be interesting to show everyone your culinary journey and your true passion in food. Show different sides and dimensions to you that not everyone may necessarily know. Mm. Again, that is what I told the group chat and that is what I told Veronica. And Nick claims that I didn't do it because Nick didn't want to be a part of it. In reality, Veronica shut me down. She's moved on, she's thriving. <laughs> this has been what, eight months, nine months? I can't do math. A very long time since it happened and it's still looming over her head. If you don't know the difference between exposing someone, a tea video, spilling the tea, versus having a productive adult conversation, then I don't know, that seems like it's on you. Oh God, I don't think this nigga knows what a productive adult con- Bro, based off that brief clip we saw from his video, I don't think he's entered the adult stage of his life. Uh, so we're entering Regressing City. Bro, he's going backwards. <laughs> what the hell? 
maybe some people find that funny. I feel like this nigga cares about Veronica Wayne more than Stephanie does. And on and on and on and on and on and on about all of the stuff between her and Veronica. I didn't even ask her. This was last year in December, December 24th. <laughs> Why do you think Veronica kept saying you told her to do that and that you agreed they were stolen? I read your comment and if you didn't speak to her until after the fact, why was she straight up lying to all your supporters about it? I didn't answer. He said, also, your microwave promo. They told me you're doing it too. Haha. <laughs> I didn't answer. Christmas day, he texted me. Question mark, question mark. And so I said on the next day after Christmas, hey, sorry, it was Christmas today and I just wanted to spend some time away from all of this. I can't speak for Veronica, but I hope you can understand where I stand on this and I would love to stay out of the situation since I believe I wasn't involved to begin with. But I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. And yes, the microwave is super cool. I even baked lasagna, I was shook. It has truly enabled my lazy side. And he said, it must suck that it went from hearing her out to Stephanie agreed they were stolen and Stephanie agreed they should come down to also Stephanie said she wants to address this in her video. But you're saying you don't want to make a video and you don't want them to come down. Complete opposite of what she said you told her. I saw her on SAS post today saying she just generalized, but that's far from generalization because now all your subs are confused. Might be good to clear things up for everyone, just what I think. I know you don't want to be involved, feel so bad for you, but at the end of the day, she involved you and there's no going back. I don't want to speak for you, nor should she, and if you ignore it on your own page, your subs might feel hurt or draw conclusions. Most people do not read the comments. December 27th, question mark, question mark? December 31st, Stephanie, I see you following my stories every day, but my message- Oh my God! No, you gotta be my girl to be blowing up my phone like this, or Riker. Anybody other than that, bro? You're getting blocked. I'm never talking to you ever again. Don't blow up my phone like on some bullshit. Or Emmy. Emmy can blow up my phone. I guess you gotta be a tribe member, but you gotta be a tribe member I've talked to. I don't wanna speak for you, nor should she. And if you ignore it on your own page, your subs might feel hurt or draw conclusions. This is like Most clear manipulation, bro. December 27th. Question mark, question mark? December 31st. Stephanie, I see you following my stories every Nigga, day. Nigga, you're my not is still important. Well. January 1st. Question mark, question mark. And I responded again question saying mark that I didn't want to be involved. Me off, Nick, bro. you went on and on and on and on and on about Veronica in the videos that you made about her. You went on and on about her in my DMs. You went on and on and on about her at dinner when we first met. I'm seeing and the pattern. you went on and on and on about her in that footage of that mukbang that you refused to release. So please, you have my full consent. Just two weeks ago was in Los Angeles. It was still looming over her head then too. And I'm gonna get into that. She's giving Veronica a lot of credit here. An opportunity for all of us to right our wrongs and dig, dig deep. And Ain't gonna lie, bro. It sound like you hating in here too. What makes you think Veronica is up for that? How you know what Veronica up to, you hating ass nigga? She's giving Veronica a lot of credit here. An opportunity for all of us to right our wrongs and dig, dig deep into meaningful conversation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so... Do I hate Veronica and I have this thing looming over my head or am I trying to have deep, meaningful conversations and am I giving Veronica too much credit? Which one is it? <laughs> this lady has so much upset feelings against Veronica Wang. Yeah, so we'll come across to the viewers as you trying to bring her back to being liked by everyone again. So do I have so much upset feelings about Veronica or am I trying to bring her back? Which one is it? Three months later, She's still very, very upset. So which about one Veronica. is Zach it? Says, when so which realizes one is it? Is it months to film anything Sweet meaningful? Sweet English, nigga. So am I still very, very, very upset, or am I trying to film something meaningful? Which one's the truth? Pitched me an idea to collab with me, Honey Eats, Kimmy, and herself to put on her channel. What the fuck is you this? You say people? that I pitched an idea to you. You kind of took it out of context a little bit. February 28th, you said, Hey, how are you? I'm loving your videos. Ow. Quick question for ya. I'm coming to LA either late March or start of April. Would you like to collab? And so I said, Hey, Nick, thank you for thank you so much for reaching out and even thinking of me. I've always been inspired by your daily posting and videos since the beginning of my YouTube journey, so I feel honored. I just think right now might not be the best timing because the drama is still a bit fresh. And I think seeing us Shit, together will just up? stir the pot more. I up? hope you understand and can see where I'm coming from. I feel like it would be a disservice to our viewers if our first videos together were clouded with everything that's happened. I hope that once the community has moved past the recent happenings, we can bring them some amazing videos together. Now, just so he doesn't try to take this out of context again, like I had mentioned, just me doing a video with Nick would make it seem like I'm taking a side in the drama. Whereas me doing a video with Veronica and Nick and talking about everything that's happened with everyone that it involved, that's just 
just having an adult conversation. So then I said, wait, so I was just checking my DMs and I realized I think Kimi is here beginning of April. So Kimi reached out to me seeing if I wanted to collab. And if you guys are here at the same time, maybe we can do an epic mukbang collab with you, me, Kimi, and Hyani. I think it, when it's just us two on screen at the, this point in time, it might stir the drama. But if we have all four of us, it'll be so insane and never done before. Let me know what you think and we can all try to coordinate if you're down. He went on to say, what dates are Kimi in town? I'm already collabing with Hyani. I actually felt bad for turning down the collab with just you and at the same time Kimi had reached out and said that she was going to be in LA and so I thought this would be a cool idea. Now right. usually when YouTubers collab they do one video for every single person's channel. So please don't make it look like I'm just trying to get AdSense money mm. when you're the one that reached out first. I mm -hmm. felt that she was very self-serving. Only reaches out to us if she wants something out of us. Who's us? Like, when have I ever reached out for you for anything other than that time about the docu-series? Which, by the way, I didn't care if you wanted to get involved or not. You knew that. I told Zach, hey, I think I want to do it with Veronica regardless of Nick. Have I ever reached out to you for anything? Collabs, information, security system advice, sponsorships, CPNs, but... Here's Nick reaching out to me. I have a quick question. Have you experienced low CPM on your channels for November? Microwave promo. They told me you're doing it. Question mark. Are you doing that CBS interview? Do you want to collab? Stephanie? And did you put your home into a land trust? By the way, would the 8th and the 9th work good for you? Seems to have posing. Hold on. Put your home into a land. Nah, I'm you. He has, bro, too many questions. Question mark. Are you doing that CBS interview? Do you want to collab? Stephanie? And did you put your home into a land trust? By the way, would the 8th and the 9th work good for you? Seems to have pros and cons. What do you think? Would you have felt better in a gated neighborhood? Or do you think that your property gate fence with cameras is good enough? Have you heard of ring security camera? What's the name of your fancy There's security system? There's more questions? Are you happy with your home? Would you like oh to film together? God. I felt that she was very self-serving. You're the one that reached out to me. You're the one that asked <laughs> to collab oh, when apparently you didn't even like me. I didn't really like her. I didn't even know her. And you're the one that made all of these videos of using times, my name no, no, for no, views. No, 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 no. amount of times. Damn. You're the one that made all of these videos using my name for views, which I don't mind. And you call me self-serving because I wanted to have this big four-way collab with you, me, Kimi, and Honey. And big you sis, am say, I using your name for like views? Kimi doesn't like her. Honey I hope not. doesn't like her. Kimi doesn't like I her. Am. Again, using other people's words publicly to hurt and humiliate other people, but I didn't know that at the time. But you knew that you didn't like me at the time, but you still wanted to collab so that our collaboration videos would get views. Who's really self-serving? This is not my fault. This is no one's fault but hers. I think Stephanie is trying to capitalize on it. Remember what I said my first impression of Stephanie was? It was awesome. She was so nice. We went out to eat. We hung out for like seven hours. She had like little gifts for me. She had like this nice little champagne and little snacks and a nice card. My first impression of she was so nice. We went out to eat. We hung out for like seven hours. She had like little gifts for me. She had like this nice little champagne and little snacks and a nice card. My first impression of Stephanie was very self-serving. I didn't give her a gift. I, I We were just going to hang out and get to know each other. That was my first impression. Like, warm and bubbly, gave me a hug, said hello. Very self-serving. Little welcome mm. to Los Angeles gift for me. And I'm like, wow. She seems like she would be a nice person. Very. So that's the truth. So which one's the truth? I didn't really like her. I love Stephanie Sue. Because I tell it like it is. This is where I'm going to be reading some- You contradictory journal looking at bro. You're just all over the place with your opinions, you fake ass nigga. She'll be a nice person. Very. So that's the truth. Very. So which one's the truth? I didn't really like her. I love Stephanie Sue. Because I tell it like it is. This is where I'm going to be reading some text messages that I had that prior to filming my first video. And the reason that I didn't read it is because I didn't want to get other people involved. I didn't want to just drag people into the mess. And I also felt like after knowing who Nick was as a person, that I just didn't want to put anyone else in his line of fire. But Nick, you didn't care. And you used Zach's text messages from months ago out of context and manipulated them without his permission. What does Zach Choi sound like? Zach Choi Here's Stephanie my problem with Bennett. you sharing those messages between you and Zach from three months ago. And I think that this is a problem that everyone should be alarmed by, is that you didn't ask Zach for that permission, and a lot of it was taken out of context, where he said, I wonder who her actual friends are. This didn't help your lie at all. This didn't help your narrative at all. 
but you put it in there because this is yet again another way for you to manipulate other people's words that they say in private and then you use it and put it on the internet to humiliate and hurt other people. Mm. Zach has apologized privately and for me I'm just gonna choose and for me, I'm just going to choose to judge his character by his actions and not by something that was manipulated by you. I've obtained mm. Zach's permission to read these text messages aloud today. She told me in my apartment, she told me in the car, she told me out of her house that we were going to discuss Veronica on my channel. You blow dry your hair today? Egged it on Look a little dry. so rich off camera. These <laughs> happened the night when I got home from the collab. We're talking about if you were going to post the footage because at this point we were even scared to ask you to not post it. Zach tried, it didn't really work. And so at 2.58, Zach said, I honestly don't think he cares that he's gonna look bad. Also, I don't think he gets it either. I was telling him the whole time after how it was going to be perceived, but he didn't seem to get it and just chalked it up to his audience being dumb. And I responded, but all- <laughs> Oh yeah, does, does Nikocado Avocado got any Avocado fans, bro? And I responded, but all audiences are always smarter than the YouTuber thinks. Oh, I don't God. know why he thinks that. <laughs> oh, and then Zach said, Yo, the that's time is too he smart. doesn't care. It's so crazy too, because I asked him privately if he was gonna go in about Veronica, and he said no. And I responded with, oh my God, he didn't want me to get a heads up. I don't know if he doesn't care at all about me or if he thinks I'm a literal idiot. Okay, but dead ass now, since we know where he stands, does he actually like me or did he just want a video to try and expose me? I'm literally asking myself the same exact question. So he didn't say anything to you? Our asses got played. I asked him so many times what you guys would even talk about. No, 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 big sis. That's not, that's not his voice. I got you. He made it look like you really wanted to talk about her so bad. You planned the discussion ahead of time. You see, big sis, like, his voice is kind of deep and masculine. Unless it's more, I asked how much. <laughs> about because he always said he'd stay away from Veronica because he knew it would make you uncomfortable. That's why I was so surprised when he said you wanted to clear the air and talk about it. He made it look like you really wanted to talk about her so bad, you planned the discussion ahead of time. Cap. And I said, he said to me yesterday that all the comments are gonna talk about Shukbang, so it would be stupid to act like we don't even know. And in my head, I'm thinking, the last thing I wanna do is him bring up some shady shit about Veronica, like the hood comment which he did in his video. Have you heard that in the hood, this? That when you look at yourself in the viewfinder, you're narcissistic? I've heard that all over the hood. And that made Stephanie uncomfortable. You could tell, bro, I'm telling you the micro expressions. I'm not tweaking on that, bro. Look at her face. Look at her face. <laughs> that when you look at yourself in the viewfinder. Oh, wait. Look, she's like, oh shit. He did not just say that. Look at her face. That's like, she was like not prepared for him to have said that, bro. <laughs> And try to make it seem like I'm a 12 year old giggling about it as if I hate her. So I said, yeah, I'm down to acknowledge that it did happen and that's our first interaction and I don't have any negative feelings about me and you about the situation. But he made it seem like it was a Veronica video. Oh. And he said he had a title in mind. Mm, so what are we going to do? That's the last You're saying say, that, that I wanted to talk so much about Veronica. But then you told Zach that you weren't going to talk about Veronica and I would be uncomfortable. And you knew that. Which one's the truth? But my regular audience, they know that I go like this. You go like this, I'll take it out. And that's what I tell everybody. I told her the minute she was in my kitchen. Tribe, I don't get it. Am I dumb? Am I slow? I mean, I am. I am dumb. Actually, don't answer that question, but I don't get it. I told her the minute she was in my kitchen, and she didn't even ask me at the end of the video, oh, could you take that part out, actually? But you know, I'm really uncomfortable. She didn't even say anything. She didn't even say anything. And this is a text message that Zach sent me on Sunday, December 22nd. This was a day after my video went up, and he said, I do remember telling him you were uncomfortable right after the camera stopped rolling and how it would look bad because he kept badgering you for information. We both also know how Nick would have reacted if I had turned his camera off or interrupted the video. I told her the minute she was in my kitchen. So no, Nick, neither of us could have just done this and you would have stopped. What people see so of Stephanie what Sue on the internet is not the Stephanie Sue that people off camera know her as. I think like people like the fact that you're just this crazy person and that's just really who you are. Like whatever you guys see on her mother. <laughs>
Wait. Mukbang, because I've been on her mukbang before. I was like looking just for the. Insane. She's just rambling like a maniac. <laughs> that's just how she is. That's just who she is. And that's I think true. <laughs> on and off the camera, she's the. That's why we all love her, is because you're not fake. You are Thank who you are. You. Yeah. Oh, the same oh. mukbang <laughs> creature that I see is the same one that goes to <laughs> dinner with her. Yeah. Creature. I'm sorry if I don't take your word for it over theirs. In mm -hmm. this video, saying she doesn't know how to say no to me, she's so afraid for. She said no to me lots of different times. She said to, no to me over dinner. Look at what happened when I did say no to you. When I was terrified of you. This is in my first video. I said, "Hey guys, sorry I've been in and out of sleep all afternoon." You said you just now realized, Stephanie. I've been sitting here for five hours when you were going in and out of That's sleep. That's a good point. You should have picked up the phone and given me a call, not leave me hanging. You didn't like it when Veronica did that to you. And then during this group chat, when you said, "Awesome." When would you like to reschedule? Prior to doing that, you had already texted Zach privately saying, Notice how her text to us didn't mention rescheduling? LMAO. I'm exposing her tonight. Okay, well, let's reschedule. I said that because I knew she wouldn't want to reschedule. So I was kind of, I was literally playing with her. I'm like, she's not, I was literally texting, I was calling Zach at the same time. I told him, I was like, I knew she's not going to, I know she's not going to say she's going to reschedule. And then you <laughs> This nigga is like, I know when I talk sometimes. I sound stupid. You can't tell me that the way this nigga talks is engaging in any way, shape, or form, bro. He said nothing but bullshit in that whole thing. Okay, well, let's reschedule. I said that because I knew she wouldn't want to reschedule. So I was kind of, I was literally playing with her. I'm like, she's not, I was literally texting, I was calling Zach at the same time. I told him, I was like, I knew she's not gonna, I know she's not gonna say she's gonna reschedule. And then <laughs> he said nothing. I know, I was playing where I knew, I knew she was, I was texting, I was calling Zach. Bro, you're capping. Yeah, just take the L, gerbil. Ramen noodles. These are extra noodles for extra calories, for extra chips. Because today we're having ramen noodles, because I love noodles. <gasps> Five dollars a pack. Who can afford this food? This is a horrible era to live in. These food shortages are cutting me dry, cutting me chest. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's... I know. <laughs> All right, so we have the cheese. You're gonna need one stick of butter. We actually might need two sticks now that I think about it. And these are a new addition to my life. These are the Korean pails. Ooh, I have to be very careful not to scratch them. Ah! <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Stephanie, you eviscerated this nigga so badly that he is like shameful. <laughs> He's shameful to watch. This is the type of content you watch as motivation to not end up looking like this nigga. I told him, I was like, I knew she's not gonna, I know she's not gonna say she's gonna reschedule and then you proceeded to post all of these on social media i did it because i was saying look i have people on my side so look at what happens when i say no to you i was getting lightheaded and scared thinking about having to put eye drops in my eyes i'm a scaredy cat i scream and cry if my finger gets poked from a king crab leg i am a very timid like scaredy cat type of guy Behind closed doors when you safe in your own little crib and you could tweet whatever you want online, that's where you feel the most powerful. But when confronted with real energy, you crumble. Just trying to paint yourself as a timid, non-aggressive. I'm not even that type of guy. Poked from a king crab leg. I am a very timid, like, scaredy cat type yeah, of guy. Yeah, I could tell. Emotional manipulation is not what I did to you. Please go watch my first video. There have been a lot of questions about my first video. Um, a lot coming from Nick and a lot of his viewers asking me why I felt the need to put in his clips about the Me Too movement from a video that he deleted from his channel. And the reason that I felt that is because, like I said in the first video, it was a pattern of behavior. This is the definition of pattern of behavior. I you linked did say the video that in the first and I'm gonna video. link it again because to me, that video showed me a lot. I never implied that Nick sexually harassed me. I never implied that Nick did anything illegal. I never implied that Nick committed crimes towards me no, or no towards anybody else. I feel like a lot of us run off patterns. I don't know if I'm the only one, but if someone makes a mistake, you forgive them. 
But if they continue to do the same, same thing over and over and over again, of course you're not the only one. People every single time. I think that's very dangerous. That's how humans I think learn. That's very alarming. Yeah. I did get an email and a DM from someone. Posting that video was really scary because I felt like even after I posted it, I'm crazy. What I'm over dramatic. That's what I am. But I was scared, so I posted the video. And within a couple hours, I got an email. From who? And a DM from someone, and they showed me proof that they had met Nick in New York, and they showed me pictures of their Snapchat between him and Nick. Talking about that date. So, if you guys aren't familiar, again, I'm gonna link that video in the description. But Nick had a date in New York City, and he claims that he didn't belittle the Me Too movement, and he was a little bit upset that he had spent a lot of time and perfume and money on food for this guy that he met. She sugarcoated it. The nigga talking about some. He scrubbed his booty hole. Dear God. Four folks come from my head talk, talking about some little tribal. What's wrong with scrubbing your butt hole? Nothing, to be honest with you. It's just, why are you telling us that? Is there health benefits to scrubbing your butt? Never mind, bro. I'm not even going to go into that line of thinking. And Nick talking about that date. So if you guys aren't familiar, again, I'm going to link that video in the description. But Nick had a date in New York City, and he claims that he didn't belittle the Me Too movement. And he was a little bit upset that he had spent a lot of time and perfume and money on food for this guy that he met in New York and they didn't do anything afterwards. And he said, December 21st, when I posted my video that day, he said, Nikocado did it to me. I am that boy that little Me Too video is about. I would love to talk to you about it. We have a lot in common. I have all the screenshots as well. And then he showed me screenshots of Snapchat and a picture that he took with Nick. And I said, hey, I got your email. I'm so sorry that something like this is how we're connecting for the first time, but Damn. thank you so much for reaching out. I'm so sorry for what happened in New York. I'm sorry you had to watch a video being made about you like that because the night didn't go as planned. Are you okay? He said, yes, I really was. I like that about you, Stephanie. I'm so sorry for what happened in New York. I'm sorry you had to watch a video being made about you like that because the night didn't go as planned. Are you okay? He said, yes, I really was not in the moment. I was so scared because he kept making all these posts about how he was going to tell this big story about me. And I kept begging him to not post anything about me because unlike him, I'm just a regular person with no level of fame. Mm. In the original video, he showed me, but with an emoji over my face and proceeded to call me a loser. It was just so crazy because like he did to you, he made me feel so comfortable in person when we first met. We talked all night and then when I left, he gave me a hug and said it was nice meeting you and I said it was nice meeting him too. So I thought we left on good terms. What then on Snapchat, he told me he was pissed that I didn't hook up with him. And I was so, so confused because I thought I, I thought we left happy. Behind closed doors, went, like a different that person, bro. About me. And he got so much hate for it, he took it down. And then he made another one I think he made me. two videos. But once again got hate and took it <laughs> took down. Both but it's down. scary because we filmed a regular video, so he has that footage of me. In addition to some naked pictures. Oh, damn. I was so happy when it was all over because he could have destroyed me. And still could. I personally think that that was highly relevant to Nick's pattern of behavior. And if I hadn't made that video, I wouldn't have spoken to this guy from New York. Mm. I wouldn't have known that he felt exactly the way I felt, scared, confused, threatened, bullied. So yes, I think it's important to point out people's patterns of behavior. Of course it's important, that's it's how we learn. Who's using their platform to threaten and to bully others. Yes. I don't really have the words. I agree. I'm disgusted that someone abused their platform to and voice to make you feel afraid for what was going to happen if he exposed you or your private conversations. There's a huge imbalance of power since he knew that you didn't have a large audience. I truly, truly am so sorry for what he's done. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here. If you need anything to help you through this process and to stop feeling the fear of him having these private pictures hanging over your head, I'm here for you. And he responded with, thank you so much. I just wanted to reach out to you because when I was watching your video, I understood all of it. He is a mental abuser. He did the almost the exact same thing to the both of us. And it's so great that you made that video because I'm sure we are not the only people he did this to. Mm. So if you ever want to talk about it, I'm here too. If something comes up where he attacks you or something and you want me to tell my story, I'd consider doing it because he really needs to be stopped. Damn. Those are my thoughts and those are his thoughts. 
But again, feel free to make your own opinion. She alluded and insinuated that she was there by the way of me and my requests. What she forgot to tell you was the truth. And the truth was, we were there because she asked us to be. That was not in her schedule. Stephanie Sue invites herself into my collab with Zach. Zach responded with, didn't we all agree that the video would perform better if all three of us were in it though? And Nick said, it might, but that's not the point. What she forgot to tell you was the truth. She invites herself into it. That was not for her, it wasn't for her to be there. And then Zach said, the video that was my idea to get everyone in the same video with you, me, Honey, and Stephanie? And Nick said, that's not what she told me. I have the screenshots. And then Zach said, I think she had the idea for a mukbang, but the one I asked you and Hyunny about that you declined was my idea. And he said, yep, that was the third time she had done that. Zach said, oh. And Nick said, which is why I never told you a reason as to why I turned it down. Cause I didn't- Are you giving him too nice of a voice, big sis? This is what Avocado sounds like. Which is why I never told you a reason as to why I turned it down. Cause I didn't want to gossip with somebody I had nowhere. <laughs> Ain't no way he disliked the comment. There's no way he disliked. <laughs> that mother really said, no, boo, you're not agreeing with me. Why not? <laughs> said, which is why I never told you a reason as to why I turned it down. Cause I didn't want to gossip with somebody I didn't know well. Anyways, she's definitely a piece of work and a bad liar. Nobody stands somebody up for a collab, then blames it on the spot. Look pillow talking, Zach bro. Said, like... I just don't want you to say something was her idea when it was <laughs> mine, lol. Which is exactly what way. Nick did in his response video. He said that I pushed myself into the ASMR collabs. And Zach is saying, well, maybe you shouldn't say that because that was actually my idea. And Nick did a thumbs down on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, I know, it's been a different time. I'm about to film TTYL. So that's the truth. She's very, like, um, self-serving. <laughs> she seems very manipulative. Just rude. Like, I don't know how these people were raised. So that's the truth. You're using- Who the fuck is that? Who is that? Carly? Stale. Like, I don't know, I'm just really nervous, but this video has to be made. One, because I owe it to everyone watching, and I also owe it to myself to apologize for my mistake. Hold I know it's totally off topic, but I just got a spray tan, so if I look completely orange, that's why I didn't have time to shower it off yet. I have to wait nine hours. Apology? I just got it like three hours ago, so. I don't really care about you giving a full, like, you know, hey, but okay, she apologized. So that's the truth. She's very, like, um, self-serving. She seems very manipulative. Just rude like i don't know how these people were raised so that's the truth you're using private conversations that you had with your friends talking badly about me it's a pattern of you posting people's private conversations in order to further your own narrative right and these were the receipts that you were showing just shit and i've talking. never spoken to carly Steele. i'm not sure how you can say her opinion about me is the truth that is just not the truth so you said that a lot of your frustration was coming from that I ghosted you and you have problems with people ghosting you. Move me off the next day for our collabs. You know, I, this is where a lot of my frustration was coming from. I texted you in the group chat at 5.05 and I said, I know that you're in LA for only a couple more days and have a lot scheduled. Again, I'm so sorry for today and I hope you're able to enjoy the rest of your day. That was at 5.05 p.m. At 5.18 p.m., which is, you texted Carly Steele, saying, bitch, I'm being ghosted by Are Stephanie Sue right now. Are you serious? The definition of ghosting is the practice of ending a personal relationship I love with that someone she thought by these definitions without up. explanation, withdrawing from all communication. <clears throat> 15 minutes later. I am so sorry that I ghosted you for 13 minutes. <laughs> and now she's willing to do it because it's Nick Akato Avocado and she's gonna get clicks. Earlier, you said that oh. I wanted to do a collab with four people with you, me, Kimi, and Henny and post it on my channel. Hang on, I didn't even know what a Nick Akato Avocado was until I seen this on Stephanie's channel. So Nico Avadudu, I don't even know who you think you is, bro, but you not that nigga. You got mad views, I give you that. But I think folks is tuning in to see what ridiculous shit you up to. I'm just keeping it real, bro. Am I hating tribe? minutes later i am so sorry that i ghosted you for 13 minutes and now she's willing to do it because it's nick Akato avocado and she's gonna get clicks earlier you said that i wanted to do a collab with four people with you me kimi and henny and post it on my channel because i want views and money but then now you're saying that i pushed my way into a collab on zach's channel because 
that would get more views from me, which means more exposure. So mm. that's contradicting with your text messages with Zach. But on top of that, I think I would have done just fine on Zach's channel without you. Don't go 45 millions. Oh my God. Zach. But on top of that, I think I would have done just fine on Zach's channel without you. God, dang, she just threw a heavy flex on your head, top nigga coddle of I do do. Oh. 45 million, 15 million, so. When you go to the office and your boss assigns you on a project, but you and Steve have to do this project together and you don't really like Steve, you're gonna do it because that's your job. I only collab with people that I like. Cause you a real nigga. I liked you at the time. I didn't know that it was just a job for you. I didn't know YouTube was just a job for you. That's your job. This you shit don't is have my to be life. best friends and cuddly with people to. I, it's crazy to say that I die over this shit. <laughs> I liked you at the time. I didn't know that it was just a job for you. I didn't know YouTube was just a job for you. This That's shit, your job. This you don't have to be style, best bro. friends and cuddly with people to eat together, to film together. Yes, mm -hmm. you Stephanie do. Stephanie Sue, I love you. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. <sighs> okay. uh, it's not a numbers game, but she's collabed with who? Veronica Wang and B Loves Life. That's it. Damn. What's that saying? Um, those who uh, fear the least have the least to hide. Something like that. Stop. Shut the fuck up, nigga. <laughs> you just talking. He's literally a yapper. Saying, um, those who uh, fear the least have the least to hide. Something like that. Stop hiding the unreleased footage, Nick. Release the footage that you have where you interrogated me about Veronica. And also, give me your consent to release my home security footage where you took pictures when I went to the bathroom, you looked up at my security cameras, you took a picture of my security feed, which you showed in your video. Yep. Very uncomfortably pointing the camera into my fiance's face. But she put a sale on every single one of her items. He says things again with so much conviction. No evidence, but so much Anyway, this nigga talking about the merch store. What did that got to do with anything, bro? And with so much conviction, no evidence. You really said so that in this video? Confidence that you believe it. But I didn't just put a sale on it. <laughs> I got a text message Saturday, December 21st, and this was from my <laughs> yeah. manager at Fanjoy, who is the big company that runs our merch. And they said, hi, we're having an end of the year site-wide sale starting December 24th through January 4th, with everything being 15% off. Hold on, I need to cop some mango merch on oh, God. Wait, but I want, I want shit from you specifically, Stephanie. Okay, yeah. I need me that till death do his part. This is how I feel about the tribe, bet. I'm copping this till death do his part. Let me get a medium. Big sis, you're a great model. I think I want, what does this one say? Bada bin. Oh yeah, I want this. Bada bean, bada boom. Yep, yep, this is it. I need that. My manager at Fanjoy, who is the big company that runs our merch. And they said, hi, we're having an end of the year site-wide sale starting December 24th through January 4th with everything being 15% off. She's never had a sale there before, as far as I know. But why now? If you don't know, then maybe don't act like you know, because mm. I had a lot of sales there before. <laughs> Basically, no, no, no. I know. Sorry, the translation, nigga coddle of Akadu. Shut the fuck up. Shut, the, shut your stupid ass up. <laughs> shut the hell up, right? I had a lot of sales you know there nothing. before. And she pulling out receipts on your ass even more. I know it's also more. strange, too. She wore her merchandise shirt in her accusation video i really like my merch i wear it a lot i don't know maybe you should pick one up that's what you, you said should... you would get one <laughs> you know the way, you know way she's pressing him about not buying her merch right now even crazier is ain't no way he's pressing her about wearing her merch in a video on her channel of course you should be when I get merch, that's all I'm wearing, bro. My merch, I wear it a lot. I don't know. Maybe you should pick one up. You said you would get one if it said rich bis, so. I would buy that over regular bis, because I'm a rich bis. Maybe I'll make that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Zach is right. Stop speaking for others, like. 70 hours later, she had a merch line, a company, uh, uh, an artist. She produced it. Shout out to Fan.
Fanjoy, I didn't get a merch designer or a producer. Um, Fanjoy actually sent me the design really, really quickly during the holidays. And they did that because they wanted to help a good cause. So, shout out to you. And she rarely uses their logos, Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, because it's subliminal marketing. And that comes at a high price. And she says, unless a company is paying her for that service, she's not going to hand it to them. This is a lie, too. Why do you keep speaking for me? I never said that. <laughs> the thing with the tags, I've never really seen any other YouTuber except for Nick talk about tags as if it's like this crazy big thing. I remember that I was so alarmed when he made this eating with eat with Q exposing video. This woman copied and pasted, plagiarized every little single thing. And I knew that he was gonna be looking at my tags and I wanted to tell him like, hey, I know you're seeing this. Like, I'm not plagiarizing you. She was sticking in tags that belong to me in the exact same order. This is crazy. It's just tags. I've just I guess little insider trade secret or whatever. I don't even fucking know because it's honestly not that big of a deal. Tags are automatically generated. So you just type a word and a bunch of different tags will pop up. It's not a big deal. I could type in Chick-fil-A into one of the tags on my YouTube videos, bro. And Chick-fil-A East, Mukbang Chick-fil-A, try Chick-fil-A for the first time. All of them shits will pop up and you can just add all of them to the video, bro. Stop it, Avocado. Nigga, yo, I'm tired of seeing this nigga face, bro. Tags that belong to me in the exact same order. This the is tags crazy. are it's public tags. words. I've just never seen another YouTuber talk about it. Nick gets really offended and he thinks that he was set up by me and that I manipulated this for, I don't know, probably months, right? Is his thought. And it's because I saw him in his Instagram post and I liked his Instagram picture of him threatening to expose me. I don't know if you guys have had a moment like this where you go from being scared to being threatened and then you have this moment of you're like sitting on the toilet and you're like you know what bitch double tap ooh stood up to a bully <laughs> and you're like shoot I'm scared again <laughs> to be fair um give Nick some credit I do think that he is a little bit sensitive to me watching his stories because December 31st of last year 2018 he said Stephanie I see you following my stories every day but I my saw messages that. go unanswered I saw that so since December of 2018 till now He's been very, very watchful of if I watch his stories. Right. I don't know. I think that's a little weirder. Only that Instagram is, posts uh, of mine definitely that Stephanie weird. Sue has ever liked. I think it's strange that you know that that's the only picture I liked. I don't know if that's the only picture I liked, but if you know that for a fact, that's a little strange that's to me. She says fucking weird, bro. What the hell? Oh, it's so weird. I liked. I don't know if that's the only picture I liked, but if you know that for a fact, that's a little strange to me. She says, I've loved everything I've seen on Twitter. I don't have Twitter, but I have like friends who have Twitter and they've been texting me screenshots of all the support on Twitter. I don't have Twitter. Please don't make assumptions of what I've seen on Twitter. Mm. Neither one of her videos <laughs> did she sit there and say, hey guys, make sure you don't bully either. That is just not the truth. She's sitting there watching it and she's not saying a peep. Again, I'm not holding it against her. She should have said this shit. And she's not saying a peep. I was trying really hard to move on. Damn. Maybe I should have addressed it more and more. Yeah. 54, Again, I'm not holding it against her. She should have said this shit. And she's not saying a peep. I was trying really hard to move on. Maybe I should have addressed it more and more. Yeah, that's on me. But I was really just trying to stop putting shit on you, cuz. Just cut. trying not to freak My out. My fault, big go sis. I gotta address you with respect. After being bullied by you. Hey, I'm looking to ring on your finger. Just trying. Yo, husband Mango was really going crazy. He's the only man I trust you with. <laughs> like I have a say or an opinion, bro. Oh my god. It. The thing is with having big sisters is that you can't be the younger brother, low key. Cause it's like even for my big sisters i feel like i'm the oldest brother because they be so they be so overwhelmed sometimes <laughs> the amount of times my sister have looked at me say jj i can't do this right now please handle it and i'm like relax <laughs> take a breath i got you that's on me but i was really just trying to just trying not to freak out and go back to that space again after being bullied by you mm. and that is 100 percent my fault so if Stop. I never made it clear, which I thought that I did, Stop blaming you, I will please. once again, please do not bully anyone. Because I know what it feels like to be bullied, and it's not okay. And it doesn't feel good, and nobody deserves it. Facts. But what I do want to say is that 
I think if anything, I can do my best to say, please don't bully anyone. I, I can't control every single person, but please, if you're listening to this and you care about anything I say, please do not bully anybody. Have I been but bullying Avakadu? Maybe, maybe, maybe you could have done something too. Maybe you could have spoken up and said, hey, guys, none of the people in the tags knew about the story of in and out or said, hey, Kenny had no idea about anything and that was my fault. When I watched your story about the in and out and all the people that you tagged, I was hurt by it. I felt bullied by it. But at the same time, maybe you could have spoken up sooner too. And maybe you could have said, hey guys, the people that were tagged in that post didn't know anything. That was all me. That You're was giving him too much credit though. I feel though. like maybe you should have stuck up for your friends too a lot mm. sooner. And instead of throwing them under the bus like you did with Zach and probably Carly. She seems very manipulative. Carly apologized. Like, I don't know how these people were raised. How could you make merch from something that hurt <laughs> you so much? Have you been in and out of sleep? And he used this case about me never saying anything about not bullying people to just completely laugh off the anti-bullying um, I guess campaign I did. I don't think it was a campaign. I just, I wanted to make something good from something bad. And some people might be shocked. Like, how could you, you said this phrase hurt you so much and now you look at it and you say, hey, swipe up or in and out merch, 100% proceeds go to charity. I think that's kind of crazy that you can't look at it as, hey, this thing that hurt me is now helping why would anybody have a problem with it if you're not profiting off of like what 100 hey i'm not for the non-tribe members that are watching this like oh stephanie sucks hey the proceeds go to charity she's not making money i mean she could be capping that could be very 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 true but she's saying publicly that the proceeds go to charity so it's helping people who need help versus herself while also alleviating the potential trauma that comes from a statement. W. I Mango. think it's kind of crazy that you can't look at it as, hey, this thing that hurt me is now helping other people. That's what I With said. That being said, I do want to thank every single person who purchased the in and out merch. It's still on sale and it's still 100% proceeds. Will always be 100% proceeds goes to Stomp Out Bullying. Even to the people w who human. shared it, tweeted about it. I don't know, Instagram story it. Human. Thank you so much because we have raised over ten thousand dollars already this is our first round of donations which i'm gonna enter in almost five later but this is an email it says dear stephanie although a formal thank you receipt is forthcoming I and she's providing proof y'all niggas is glazing <laughs> if you got a problem with this you're glazing you're actually glazing come on she's actually providing proof look at this I want to send you my personal thanks for your extremely generous donation. There are no words to thank you. It is Stomp Out Bullying's purpose, passion, and commitment to help every student we can. Our work has helped over 5 million students resolve bullying and cyberbullying situations. Our help chat line has assisted over 100,000 students and saved the lives of over 2,000. Through our various networks, we have saved over a total of 6,000 lives. These numbers increase Damn. daily. Please know that your donation will be put to good use in helping kids and teens across the country nah, feel safe clap in it up school, for online, and in their communities. <laughs> Wishing you and yours a very happy and healthy new year. With an abundance of gratitude, Ross Ellis, who is the founder of Stomp Out Bullying. Shout and out to you, Ross. this email is not for me. This is to everyone. So, no, in and out merch is a good thing, and we are helping people. So please don't bring it down. Stephanie Sue has never posted, ever a mukbang or a video on her channel that early. You say it was a first time for me. So it's like, oh, she planned it because it's the first time she did this. It was also a first that I've never gone more than two days without posting on both of my channels. I've never made a video like that about another influencer. That was a first. Mm. I've never felt scared of another influencer. That was a first. So yeah, there was a lot of first. I don't know why you would think that all of a sudden I wanted to have this master plan to expose because he wants to feel he important did this for views and that i'm doing it to monetize especially when you talk about the in and out merch i wanted to sell that merch so that i could donate 100 percent of the proceeds to help people who felt the way that you made me feel but mm. why is that manipulation when you went on to post so many pre-recorded videos knowing that everyone was clicking to see if you were responding to my video post <laughs> damn this shit look bad, bro. This. This is just, this can't be healthy. You know what I'm saying? Like, the thing is, why it gotta be so much crazy shit? Like, why can't it just be like.
I guess that's the whole point. That's the whole appeal. Recorded videos, knowing that everyone was clicking to see if you were responding to my video, Damn. posting this thumbnail <laughs> of you eating Taco Bell, I'm not okay, and monetizing all of those. So when you do it, it's okay. When I do it to create merch, it's to manipulation. Donate, it's manipulation. Mm. I think that's very scary that you have a pattern of behavior of doing no, this. No, I meant to press the boom. It out. I'm sorry. Instead of maybe thinking about, oh, did I make her feel uncomfortable? Oh shit. Well, let me just say sorry. I don't know how you tried to make it so much more elaborate, throw people under the bus in your video and blatantly lie in your video and try to assassinate my character and twist my words in your video so that you can push a narrative that I set you up. I'm a real person. What I said to her is what I would tell you. What you said to me is that- <laughs> Major cap. Major cap. Major cap. <laughs> There's so much cap that I'm not even saying major cap anymore. It's major cap. Let's hear that dog shit sentence one more time. I'm a real person. What I said to her is what I would tell you. What you said to me is that... Made the awesome. pen fly on my finger, bro. But what you said to Zach was, I'm going to expose her tonight. <laughs> and then what are you telling your audience? Because these all sound like different things. <laughs> it's also a lie because where are those sponsored posts? <laughs> all these time-sensitive posts. How many videos has she made on her mukbang channel? I... I did have a lot of sponsored posts, but I also skipped a lot of days on my mukbang channel. It felt weird coming back quickly with a sponsored video, and so I've been holding it off. What's kind of frustrating is that if I don't post sponsored posts, I've been Damn. Holding it off. What's kind of frustrating is that if I don't post sponsored posts, Nick says she's a liar. I already knew she was lying. If I post them, Nick will say probably she's money Manip hungry. She's manipulating she yeah. so she could get sponsorships. She is capitalizing on any little thing she can do. Ah. Yeah. Okay. I never did. I only respond to companies that reach out to me. And I think it's kind of crazy that you said, you know, I'm not a mind reader. I'm not a mind reader. But then you went on to say, I know. I already knew. She knows what she's doing. How do you know that? Walking contradiction, bro. But now you know. I've boomed so many times, his career is over. Anything like. I learned from this situation, it's that. I'm so sorry to Veronica and anybody else that I've spoken about with Nick. That is 100% my fault. That's something that I'm learning from right now. Mm. But I think what people fail to realize is this isn't about a bunch of people that got caught talking shit. It's one of those feelings where I would never say this to just anyone that I first meet for the first time. But Nick has this way of making you feel so comfortable. He's a good it's manipulator. It's almost like you have this feeling of like, holy shit, like it took me so long to find a good friend. And Nick, you are that friend. And you feel mm. like he relates to you and you guys connect and he's compassionate and warm and all of these things that you end up feeling like you can just open up about everything to him. And he doesn't judge you for it, at least to your face. Hopefully you can trust me now. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I do. Good. She's very like um self-serving. I didn't really like her. I and so it's a very wow. big difference from me or Zach or anyone that he showed in his video that talked about people behind each other's backs. It's the way that he manipulates people and makes them feel like he cares and makes them truly feel like they can trust him. And then he turns around to use their words throughout the whole video, other than the text messages that I sent him in the group chat about the docuseries about Veronica, all of his other receipts and text messages and audio clips that he showed as evidence are just private conversations between him and other people talking badly about me. Honey Eats doesn't like her. Kimmy doesn't like her. She's really f selfish. Stephanie Sue is straight up business. It's just rude like i don't know how these people were raised yeah and then zach goes i wonder who her actual friends are lol i've just been in and out of sleep i just want to say that this video was ridiculous <laughs> this video was truly ridiculous i watched this video and his video is full of him contradicting himself bluntly lying without this the lawyer talking right now i ain't gonna lie manipulating people <laughs> and their words and i don't know what to say this is rob I mingo speaking right now try to show as much proof as possible to i'm on your side 100 percent i ain't gonna lie about me these are receipts that i've always had and i never use them because again i didn't want to expose nick in my first video i just wanted to be freed from feeling threatened by him him mm. holding this thing about to expose me by all i have to say is 
I really don't trust the thing Nick says. It doesn't matter whose side you're on. Me neither. I'm not trying to convince you to be on my side or be on Nick's side. Nick said in his Instagram story that there are two sides to every story. That's a lie. There's actually three sides to every story. There's my side of the story, there's Nick's side of the story, and then there's the truth. I believe that the truth is in the unreleased footage that he refuses to release where he interrogated me. Hey, lie. She has not let go of this unreleased footage, Nick. Did Nick release the footage? There's a part of me that's thinking, no. Yo, she's snapping on this thing. <laughs> Let's keep it honest, bro. She's dissecting this man piece by piece. I really don't trust the thing Nick says. It doesn't matter whose side you're on. I'm not trying to convince you to be on my side or be on Nick's side. Nick said in his Instagram story that there are two sides to every story. That's a lie. There's actually three sides to every story. There's my side of the story. There's Nick's side of the story. And then there's the truth. Ugh. I believe that the truth is in the unreleased footage that he refuses to release where he interrogated me about Veronica and in my home security footage where he took pictures without my consent that he also refuses to give his consent for me to release. So at this point, I'm done talking about it. I don't want to do any more back and forth because this was absolutely ridiculous. All he did was contradict himself, bluntly lie, and twist and manipulate stories. Say whatever you want, boo-boo. I am done. <laughs> I am no longer scared of you because all you do is twist things yeah. and lie. I think it's starting to show. Mm -hmm. I'm moving Facts. on with mukbangs. I'm moving on with my life, with my freaking vlogs, with Instagram. I'm going to be a TikTok star. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm moving on with promoting in and out merch. I'm gonna keep doing it because 100% of the proceeds go to a really, really good cause. I'm right. gonna keep posting videos and I'm gonna be happy. And that's it. Bye. <laughs> I love you, big sis. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, yeah, we like this out of you. Dissect that nigga. What's so crazy is that big sis Stephanie is getting millions of views per video. Yeah, I'm fully on Stephanie's side. This nigga Nikocado of Akadu it seems like a narcissistic liar that only speaks the way he does um, behind closed doors with a keyboard. He's a keyboard warrior. Um, okay, this video is long as hell, and I'm getting kind of tired. So, good night. Good night, child. I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow. I just. Yo, <laughs> it's the end. Huh? Leave a like and share it to your friends and your kin. Huh? When I post a video, I'm gonna need y'all to attend. Huh? Thank you for the view, huh? but I ain't done with you. 2023, I'm about to be Jordan with the flu. Huh? Yeah, join a tribe. Huh? Yeah, join a tribe. I'm gonna need y'all to subscribe.